welcome to episode 245 of the Overlook Hour. I'm your host, Clark Little. Along with me, as always, is the man over in Oakland, California. He has shifted his camera slightly to the right. I'm seeing a little bit more of his bookcase, a little bit more of his frame fixtures. I also see a box fan on the floor. It's Randy Michael Stat. That's me. I did get a new monitor recently, so I kind of had to uh, change my setup. A computer monitor? Yeah, I switched from a uh, a 24 to a 27. Now we got a baby monitor, dude. you dude. only upped the size of my dick? <laughs> yep. That's a shame. <laughs> it's good, dude. Dude, I got a Dell monitor. Well, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you'll get more use out of your three inches than I get out of my three inches. Well, that's hope. Wait. Hit Dell up and be like, we got a new slogan. It's, dude, I got a Dell. <laughs> <laughs> and That's that good. that gold joke was brought to you by Russell John Fisher. Fuck yeah. And Oksana Valerian Osachi. I, I don't think I had any involvement in the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I see you as one person. Dude, I got a Dell. <laughs> it works. You're it's an fucking idiot. good. It's like, can you hear me now? It's like, dude, I got a Dell. Taco. I had a I had a joke. Um, oh, are we talking 10 years ago? Never, yes, literally. <laughs> literally. And it was about Adele. Don't, don't use fucking literally like that. Oh, I mean, it literally was 10 years ago. Oh my ago. god. Um, and it was about Adele, and it was something about a farmer in Adele. The computer or the farmer in the dells the singer the de- yeah the singer the the, the now like skinny junk. one that creeps everybody out junk it try you again it's terrible <laughs> you know what's not terrible this week our guest valeri milov joins the show to talk about his film bullets of justice hold on how do you do oksana was that a good that's how I would pronounce it. I feel yeah. like you went quick because you were worried about it. I went quick because I am confident in my pronunciation of the Russian language. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> even though he's not the Russian. All right, get offended, Oksana. He does speak Russian, even though I, hate I speak Russian. Oh, okay. yeah. I did back off of it. I think he speaks 48 languages, so we cover that in the Da. End. That's yes. Okay. In like nine <laughs> languages. Uh, yeah, Valeria joins the show to talk about Bullets of Justice. Uh, this is a film uh, that was teased by Russell, what, two weeks ago? Uh, and then you jinxed yep. it, and then you addressed it, oh, yeah. you jinxed it, and you were like, we'll tell you when he gets on the show. Well, he's on the show, and he did great. Now, I, I will say this. Um uh, Valeri admittingly does not do a ton of interviews. In fact, like we may be one of his first podcasts he's ever done. Um, I think we are because he says that American. he just he doesn't like to to speak, and also he says, you know, he he does he said uh, from his perspective he doesn't speak English very well. Like you know, during we had no problem talking with him uh, during this time, and we had a great conversation with him. Great guy, and we, we will speak with him again. Um, but I, I think it's a very interesting perspective uh, when we get, you know, um, ESL uh, speakers on the show uh, because he's very um, sort of plain in his language. So, you know, he, he comes across as just being very honest because he doesn't maybe have a full grasp of the language. So he maybe, you know, can't uh formulate a more ornate sentence so you know where he's not really protected by the language to be a little bit softer around the corners yeah where it's just you know he says dumb and stupid a lot yeah it's it's just great and it just but it just comes across as completely genuine and honest and he's not really you know searching for those filler words and it's just uh it was it was honestly a very refreshing interview and just uh yeah great guy had a great time yeah, it it wasn't like flowery or jivey in any way, right? And jivey. He's very fucking cool. But we talked to Rudy Ray Moore. <laughs> you know, he's you know you're talking jazz at people. You're you're chaotic yet melodic. Talking jazz Dude. at people. Yeah, chaotic and melodic. God, you sound like Bill Maher or some <laughs> shit right now. Sound fucking lame. Dude. 
That was our original podcast title. We were chaotic and melodic. <laughs> Dude, chaotic and melodic is a great R and B duo. <laughs> All right. Dude, that's what, if let me tell you something. If Millie Vanilli was <laughs> melodic and chaotic, they would both be alive today. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Laugh? <laughs> I don't know. It made me uncomfortable. <laughs> I felt like you were implying you put a hit out on him or something. No, Life put out a hit on him. Did you hear that oh fucking song? <laughs> girl, you know it's girl, you know it's girl, you know it's... One of them's dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, great show. But before we get to that, we got to do the thing where Oksana half researches movies and then <laughs> has to squint to read it and then generally tells Russell to read it. So here we go, Oksana. I don't tell him to read it. He just takes it. <laughs> it's not true. I normally don't. <laughs> Honestly, I thought we should pitch that to Randy. He should read our female bag. I'm down. Which Randy, you ever thought about, Randy, you ever thought about doing books on tape? <laughs> no, I have been doing some voiceover work for work, though. What? Really? Yeah, a little bit. I've been doing some uh, like tutorial videos. Can you please share those immediately, <laughs> and we will release them as bonus content next week. Yeah, it's, uh, you have to be on the page. <laughs> it's only it's it's only internal uh, information. I can't I can't share that with the general oh, listening bullshit. audience. We'll we'll do a Mickey and we'll bleep it out. <laughs> nah, well, you can't fuck with the CIA, dude. They'll come for us. Yeah, that's true. All right, Oksana, it's your turn. All right, so this weekend we have lots of stuff happening. The first thing... <laughs> I, man, you started strong, I and know. I thought you were going to go. And I'm not a talker. I'm not good at it. Which um... is great that you have your own segment on this show. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> um, so this weekend, or I mean starting this Friday the 14th, <laughs> The Balboa mm. Theater is reopening at half capacity for Godzilla's Monster Bash. Talk about the worst meme ever. Friday the 14th, where they got like the sad Jason next to the calendar. <laughs> All right, you can continue. Prepared to see it a bunch, though. So Friday the 14th through Sunday. Um... Wait, wait, say Friday the 14th again. Wait, give me, I need a, okay, go ahead. Friday the 14th. That's good. I was hoping you weren't gonna play. You were gonna play anything other than the guitar. Okay. So I was fine with that. No, that's my guitar. That's gonna be my guitar from now. My guitar gently weeps. You fuck, Oksana. <laughs> so there are three days of Godzilla movies. They're oh all gonna be God. happening. Three days too many. The Balboa <laughs> tickets are on sale at cinemasf.com slash Balboa. Um. I don't. I don't think I've. I haven't heard of any of these, <laughs> except for Mothra. Mothra vs. Godzilla from 1964. X from Outer Space from 1967. They have links to, and descriptions to all the. Wait, bad. the X from Outer Space? That's a Godzilla movie. I guess. Do we got Shin Godzilla? <laughs> it's too trendy. Nope. You, we are not the the kaiju people. I apologize. I'm more interested in the Q from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that's going to be Friday through Sunday at the Balboa. It's indoors too, so yay! That's yeah, they're back. reopening. <laughs> Um, so this week is also Clark's most anticipated movie of the year's opening, Spiral. Well, it's actually Entourage 2, but go ahead with Spiral, that's fine. <laughs> what if they did a reunion? No, I'm so done with Entourage. I, that's this what is, I thought. Yeah, please. No, we, you we, all, it, we all make mistakes. <laughs> okay, Newsom. <laughs> It was an early dinner. <laughs> I all... mean, look, I, I would rather my mistake being anything related to the French laundry opposed to Entourage. Let me just put that on the record. You know, apparently, Randy, can you confirm this? I know you're our news broadcaster. Um, it, you'll get it later on. That's a callback to, yeah. I, are we supposed to be getting a $600 check in California from Newsom? I've seen headlines. I haven't dipped into full articles yet, so I'm not sure. It sounds Dude, like it, though. He's... Let me tell you why that's 
bullshit. Oh god. <laughs> because state employees are we have mandatory furloughs. We have a mandatory pay cut for the next two fucking years yeah. because California's broke. But he's gonna throw out six hundred bucks to everyone. Fuck him. Oh. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's straight up bribery, right? The Overlook Hour, voice of the people. <laughs> God. All right, can you keep that passion as you roll through your segment? Yeah. You really yell this description. <laughs> Darren Lynn Bousman directed this piece of shit. God. I... God. Oh, man, he's an idiot. You know, he sent, he sent his fucking headshots to, like, every state office, apparently. Or hey. not every. Don't continue this uh, dialogue of Gavin Newsom or Madeline will edit this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's an idiot. Anyway, so a criminal <laughs> mastermind unleashes a twisted form of justice in Spiral, a terrifying new chapter from the book of Saw. My oh. favorite book of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the book of Eli is about, right? The book of Saw, chapter one. <laughs> also, I noticed IMDb is uh, out. And the Lord spoke. Not up to date with the release date for this movie. This is May twenty first. Well, they've changed it so many times. They changed it a hundred U.S. times. I thought time. it was in October. What What is that COVID horror movie? The horror movie that uh marked the apocalypse for many people as the advertisements never came down. That's a callback for anybody who re- listens Contagion? to the Red Scare. Uh, no, um, the one about the noise. A quiet <laughs> place too. There you go. That movie that was like the forever movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming out at the end of the month, finally. I'm fucking... I hate that goddamn trailer. I'm I'm very over the trailer, but I still want to see the movie. I haven't watched the trailer. I like the first one a lot. I don't. I flipped. I don't want to see the movie. I watched that trailer so many times, I'm mad at it. <laughs> I don't remember seeing the trailer at all. Well, I will bet <laughs> you money it's going to play before any movie you see in the next, like... Yeah. It's definitely going to play before Spyro. <laughs> anyway, so I will give money to anybody who knows what that audio clip is. By the way, there's also music underneath, much, so I don't know how well they'll be able oh. to hear it. <laughs> you always ruin my fun. <laughs> Do you mean like what that sound is really? No, like oh, okay. what it's from. Okay. All right, let's power through. What else? <laughs> All right, so the last thing I'll mention is a movie I've been waiting for for... <laughs> a little sass. A little sass behind that. Okay. <laughs> not intentional. <laughs> um, profile from the director of Unfriended, I believe one and two. Another <laughs> long last name, Timur Bakmanbetov. Oh, you you had it, and then you You, did you failed. <laughs> Clark, you want to give it a go? I'm not reading it. I don't know. I'm not typing anything. <laughs> it is a Screen Life movie. Um, an undercover British journalist infiltrates the online propaganda channels of the so-called Islamic State, only to be sucked into her, sucked in by her <laughs> recruiter. How horny is this movie? I don't know. Where was she going? Yeah, what she sucking? <laughs> she sucking an undercover brother? What? <laughs> She was sucked in by her. Oh, a, oh, a lesbian love story. Love this. I actually was imagining some sort of female genitalia implosion. Oh, that would be messy. <laughs> that would be menacing? M- messy. messy. Oh, I thought... Yeah. No one wants to see blown out pusses everywhere. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> All right. Just don't cry for it. So, profile... I only cry for Argentina. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. Okay. Profile is going to be coming to theaters Friday. Early screenings on Thursday. I'm dying to see it. The end. Why? Don't die for a movie, dude. It's not that crazy. Dude, it looks good. The Screen trailer does look good. Yeah, I'm it looks excited to see. I like super did not want to watch the whole trailer, but I couldn't stop because I, this movie gets crazy. Because <laughs> Newsom had a gun to her head. Yeah, I know. <laughs> God, you got to cool it with the Newsom hate on here, dude. Why? Because we support him. Oh, do we? Yeah. <laughs> no, you you're the one that made the shirt, Noose for Newsome. Look, when I look when I try to promote <laughs> Idiot. That's good. Look, you remember the days of me trying to promote this show and I oh, would God. uh you know use many hashtags on Facebook and uh hashtag Gavin Newsom happened to be one of those. So, you know, we got oh. a big we got a big Newsome uh, fan base. All right. 
Let's burn those shirts. Then. And also, we have eight hundred people from the island of the Philippines who like like us on Facebook. The Watkins are listening. What? Ron Watkins. <laughs> Oh, Walk- oh, Ron Watkins. I thought you said the Walkins. Oh, no. I, I heard that too. <laughs> well, you might both be right, as they got an email from a thing that I'd never pay attention to, and it said we moved up the ranks on iTunes by seven positions. Hell yeah. <laughs> I think it's it after up. three weeks of being down like 100 or something. I don't know. That's right. Hey, Merritt, you hear that? <laughs> Fuck you, dude. We're coming. <laughs> For any questions, queries, concerns, or comments, please direct those to podcast at overlooktheater.com. Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes, the other one to find us. Like us, comment, tell a friend, tell an enemy. It's not any of my business what you do on your own personal time. The Overlook Hour is available on Facebook as The Overlook Hour. The Overlook Hour is available on Instagram as The Overlook Theater. The Overlook Hour is available on Twitter as The Overlook Hour. And the Overlook Hour is available on YouTube as The Overlook Theater. Find us, like us, comment, tell a friend, tell an enemy. Randy... Uh, with that news from Russell, I'm now going to uh, launch our Patreon. So, Listen, all of y'all, we're on Patreon. And then we can get Clark's work tape, too. What are you talking about? Where no, no, Come they on. shut down. Come In on. fact, I got to wake up early tomorrow and start pulling calls because I got to tell them how to, you know, talk like a professional. Pulling call girls? Talk like a professional. All right. Randy, so, take I us home. two years in K. <laughs> I know how to talk. My brakes were cut, the light turned red, and a big scary ghost appeared, waving a bloody stop sign. That was very good with the timing. A a little too early, but I've been known to go a little too early myself. (laughs) I was going to apologize. I think I trampled you there. You did. You've never had good timing. We all know this. I had it for a minute, and then I gave up the board. And I've fallen off. Also, there's a delay. I'm, there's no delay. I'm just making up excuses now. <laughs> my, my apologies. Are you okay? You seem a little extra nervous. No. No, I uh, just ate a bunch of sushi uh, very hurriedly. Nagiri or sashimi? Uh, neither? Or is it sashimi? Uh, nigiri's just the, the fucking fish, right? Wrong. You got it. You got it mixed up. <laughs> what <are> you... <laughs> it's the other way around. What? Are you drunk? What is going on? Yes. With your voice? We pay you for your voice, and it's clearly like fading out. It's the dry air here in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all been doing karaoke or something? What the fuck? <sighs> no, I've just been laying out by the pool. <laughs> it sounds like you've been laying by the and, air. Conditioner. And Clark's actually been threatening me to throw me in the water. All right, where is Clark? We want to talk to him. I'm over here in the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> Shitting I'll again? I'll be over there in a second. <laughs> he is, he's had diarrhea for the last two days. What have you been feeding him? A lot, copious amounts of cheese pizza and garlic bread at the same time because he's a, a sad, sad animal. <laughs> Dude, I've been eating the same shit, and uh, I pray for diarrhea. Because I am, uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm backed up. Also. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am back from the bathroom. <laughs> all right, Creep, all right the... creepy, get out of here. All right, that idiot. Now, um, no, dude, I've had a long week. You, you uh, came back for my birthday. And then you left yes. on Oxana's. <laughs> yes, I did. And, uh, <laughs> dude, since Thursday... Thursday night, I, we've been drinking, and it's fucking a nightmare. <laughs> Dude, You're I'm not a grown ass man. I know, but oh, man, we 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 were fortunate enough to be friends with people who all have birthdays around our birthdays. So you don't think that's distressing? I don't know. I the stars just 
you know, they want the bulls to run together, man. Oh my god! But uh, yeah, Thursday we had to move drag race from Friday, so we we did Thursday and we did a countdown to my birthday. Thank you, Terrell. He loves to do the birthday countdown, so we drank. Friday was my actual birthday, and we uh, had a barbecue at the BFG Studios where we played Rock Band. Oh man, I haven't been uh, fake taking shots in. I don't know if I've ever done that, but I was dumping shots that night. Terrell oh, was yeah. on one. Dude, I went in there in adult mode. Clark, you would have been very happy. Good. I was like, I'm not going to have any beer. I'm only going to take drinks that people offer me. And this is going to be a rule that I don't tell anybody. Little did I know that Terrell was going to get impatient and offer drinks or, you know, shots every fucking 15 minutes. Um, did you want to say how you handled those shots, Oksana? Um, I took them all like an idiot and... <laughs> Threw up more than I've thrown up in the past, like, three years combined in one night. Yeah. So that was Friday. Then on Saturday, uh, Clark was here. And I all I wanted to do, because I never fucking see him anymore. I'm like, let's just hang out all day and watch movies. I could not fucking get out of bed. <laughs> I Man, I felt like shit. And then that night, we went to a fucking escape room on mission. And, uh... You know, I I listen to a lot of political news and everybody likes to uh, pardon the the phrase, but shit on San Francisco and talk about all the poop on the street. And I'd never actually seen it until Saturday night. We parked right next to a little tree and we dodged four piles of human yeah. poop. It was and, all around one area. And they looked like the emoji. Like they were like nice <laughs> swirly poops. Like oh, That's good. They fucking reeked though. They got a good diet going on apparently. Dude. Well, <laughs> let me let me explain something to you. All human shit reeks. Eh. No, it's no eh. It's just if you take it out of the water element. <laughs> indoor plumbing is the best thing that we've got oh, going I, for I us. I totally agree. Indoor plumbing is it it beats out air conditioning. Air conditioning's up there. Don't get me wrong. Big fan. Indoor plumbing's above that. Oh yeah, and. Dude, we above electricity, above the internet, it's indoor plumbing. So I, I couldn't help but think about you in that escape room because I didn't know what the theme of the room was until we got there. And it was what? A wizard's trial? Oh god. Dude, you would have hated it. Dude. Everybody I... had a wand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was fun though. I had a lot of fun with it. Oh. We should do an escape room and record it. I feel like I'm just developing acne as you tell me the story. <laughs> okay, well, well, don't start now. I'm not done yet. God. So then after that, we went, okay, so it was our buddy uh, Chris's birthday, and uh, not the BFG one, a different one. And we went to his house after, where he started pulling out bottles. He's like, hey, I got a $300 bottle of tequila. Let's I'm like, oh. But I told myself, I'm going to go here. He, the man showed up for my birthday. I'm going to be upbeat, energetic, and having fun. And I was the only one. I was very pumped, though. So I took shots. Then I got bullied into, you know, your fucking favorite show, Hot Ones. Oh, okay. yeah. I haven't watched Hot Ones in a very long time, but I'm a fan. Sean Evans is so, a genius. I, it was forced on me to eat a wing with the number eight sauce on it. Oh. And, uh. Insanity or whatever? I don't, I don't know what the hell it was Let called. Me I had a lot of that. And then was I it Bomb? I don't know. It was number oh, eight. The Bomb is horrible. That's what I hear. I haven't had it. It's like battery acid. You've had it? Yeah, it's not good. It, it, whatever I had was very hot, but I uh, told myself that I <laughs> was going to keep my pride, and I refused to give any sign of discomfort. Of I course. couldn't stop myself <laughs> from sweating, but I, I, I achieved making Terrell angry. And he went, oh, you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it still hurts. I'll admit that. Anyway, we were there. We drank a bunch that night. Sunday happens. Oksana's birthday. We had an interview. Then after that, went to my parents, <clears throat> who thankfully were understocked on alcohol. So then my mom ordered a bunch, including a bottle, and we drank that. And also she hid a bottle of vodka for Oksana <laughs> because she likes to stereotype Russians. And It's the seasonal peppermint one. It's the best. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> the, what did we drink? for mouthwash? What the hell was yesterday? It is very oh, and, and then we did a live stream with uh because we moved isolation on Monday, so we drank again there. Let me tell you something right now. Vodka uh, peppermint vodka is an excellent mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
it's only 30 percent, so it doesn't it doesn't it's not as bad as like regular vodka. Yo, you clean no, your fucking good. mouth with a little minty and a little and a little fun after you know taste now you know i'd been doing intermittent fasting that shit's been out the window and the only food that anybody had at any of these locations was pizza and garlic bread so i'm right there with you you fight it took you six years but you connected the dots and i'm proud of you it took a very long time we walked from coast to coast but you made it happen well what are you talking about my story went somewhere because while we're, we started this conversation, I said pizza and garlic bread, and then you went on this <laughs> insane inventory of your past seven days of debauchery. Yeah. Well, dude, we know fucking five people. It it starts with a couple people that, you know, wouldn't make sense to mention. Then it's me. Then it's like Chris, dude. <laughs> then it's Oksana. Doesn't make sense. And then today uh, is Grant's birthday. The day we're recording, which is May 11th. Happy birthday, Grant. He, uh, Got a very cool Dio shirt off of eBay. Gross on <laughs> cool? Ooh, I'm jealous. Yeah. Yeah. The the man responsible for all our uh, art, basically, all the character art and all the logos and everything. We we'll love you, Grant. All right. Grant, you're you're cool. Happy love. birthday, Grant. Eh. <laughs> he doesn't listen to the fucking show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't your mom house and all those other hacks? But shows. according to Grant, Grant will tell you he's seen like 14 movies. Yeah, that's, that's fair. not true. It, it's close. Also, Dude, he went to you, with y'all every week for like years. I was about years. to say, yeah. No, that's true. He did live like around the corner, though. So From the Alamo, yeah. yeah. But it took a while. And we did pay for his ticket every time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have to buy my friends. Um, that's true. Also, he's in Ohio. Uh, Daryl Blood, thank you. He sent me a, a VHS copy of Gummo. There we oh, go. Oh, dude. It looks great. What was the other one? Uh, he sent a couple. He sent that one movie, Daryl. Yeah, that looks it's good. For him, and then uh, Buffalo. Buffalo 66, yeah. 69. Oh, nice. It's not Buffalo 69, you idiot. <laughs> There's also that. Buffalo Exchange. He Man or something cartoon? Yeah, and uh, I just didn't show that to Clark. I didn't think he'd be interested. <laughs> dude, I like He Man. <clears throat> I went through a He-Man phase as a child. I don't like to gender my heroes. Oh, wait a minute. That's a good segue into the political thing you wanted to mention. No, that was a joke. That was not oh, for okay. real. <laughs> <laughs> that was not for real. I, you know, I was tempted to pull up a, a clip um, from the Golden Globe shit. Did you hear about that? I hear that they're no, not Jay Leno do it next not. year or something. <laughs> no. Do you hear about this? I know, right? No, um, Tom Cruise. He sent back all his awards. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because people are boycotting the Golden Globes because it's all white men working there. I, I pulled up. A, the Golden Globes is run by the Hollywood foreign press. Yeah, which is white men, apparently. The, but they're foreign. I pulled up a. a, a and their new, press. Do you want to hear audio? I have the story. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. What's he yeah. doing? Giving it back? Yeah, no, Tom Cruise it, yeah, will not yeah. be controlled by any cults. That's why. <laughs> Damn, Randy. <sighs> Just David Miscavige, show us your wife. That's all we want to <laughs> see. I, I'm convinced she doesn't exist. I don't know who the hell you're talking about. Bro, you don't know about the Miscavige's? No. no. Well, Neither I- one of you? No, why are you whispering? What kind of what kind of existence do you two pretend that you are having? Did Creepy go to bed? I'm confused. Why do are you, you not? I don't understand. How do you not know? All right, David Miscavige is the leader of the Church of Scientology. Oh, His okay. wife, they we have not seen in years. They don't know where she is. Did he kill her? Oh yeah. Is she locked away? Does she exist? Yeah, last seen in public in August 2007. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I've never heard of her. That's 26 years ago, dude. I only keep up on Bill Gates, dude. Oh, dude. Did you hear B&M. about b and BNM broke up, man. No, but did you hear why? Oh, something about Epstein. his old girlfriend. He used to, re- was it Epstein? Yeah. Yeah, his old girlfriend, Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought you'd be excited. It's definitely not. 
I Epstein. thought Creepy Clark. I thought there was a rumor that Creepy Clark was the ghost of Epstein, dude. <laughs> he likes to get that going. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to get that going. But he's All actually right. the the ghost of Johan Vandersloot or whatever the fuck. Dude, I was I was. <sighs> so what? Next week you're gonna be home though, right? Allegedly. Okay. Unless I, unless I mess it up, which I may Why? mess it up. How could you fuck that up? Man, there's, you know, let me tell you something right now. I'm a big time player down here, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you understand that? Like, you know, me as, you know, Clark, the simp. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like I'm over here. Just fucking dude. Oh, damn. <laughs> Do you understand? You know, I'm breaking hearts and blasting farts down here, baby. I'm running shit. So you got runny in, shit. In order to, and I got, I'm running shit with runny shit, man. It's the best way. I'm very dehydrated. No, the thing is, I got to, I gotta get these, I gotta get them ready, and they're not ready. But no one's gonna be down here next week, so. They're all going to be back up there, and then they want me to do what I'm doing down here, up there, but with a group that's already done what they needed to do, and I got to redo that? I don't want to do that, man. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That was terrible. All right. I hate it down here. It was really interesting. I got though. demoted. You did? Yeah, man. I'm on the third floor. Oh, okay. I've got two <laughs> full beds. The smallest TV I've ever seen. You can switch up the beds every night, though. That's kind of nice. I'm not going to do that. Switch what, up your... What, what, am I, what is this, 1969? <laughs> yeah, you got to change your perspective. What am I, Jerry Garcia? <laughs> what are you talking about, switch up the beds? You got to change your perspective every once in a while, you no, know? you stay in Sleep the same in a different bed. bed. Mm -mm. No, I would never... My, mm -mm, my neuroses would never allow me to hit REM cycle sleep if I'm going bed to bed to bed. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Sometimes I sleep on our couch just to like me? feel something, you know. No, I would, <laughs> dude. Jump in bed to bed, I'd feel like a slut, man. <laughs> okay, aren't you? I thought that's what this whole conversation was about. I'm a fat slut, dude. <laughs> I, dude, I, I feel 914 pounds. Yeah, I'm there with you. I, I mean, I did just show you pistachio muffins that I got at a grocery <laughs> store. Down yeah, those look dope. Dude, it's the best thing. It's one of the best things I've ever had in my life. Um, I love pistachio flavored anything. And they, they, dude, they are green, baby. They're great. <laughs> you would have been fucking mad on Monday because when we were doing isolation, Jasadi joined us and he came over with the fish fillet. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, just feeling in the mood. And he had one. He sat down and then he noticed that we had pizza. <laughs> From like uh I don't know where they what was it Speedy or some I don't know some Speedy mom and pizza? pop out oh y'all went to Speedy's yeah yeah the drive through oh, Speedy's good yeah it was good dude I didn't mean to go to Speedy's for like nine hundred years well, I, I'd never been there yeah and um so David ordered it and then he was sitting down and he was looking at it and they're like dude you can have some if you want so he fucking threw away the fish fillet I was like what are you doing dude. <laughs> And he's like, I'm not going to eat that shit. You go get a good pizza. I'm like, you're wasting food. I don't, oh man, I felt like weird. Hey, Jasadi, eat both. <laughs> I know, right? What the fuck? Or give it away. Give it to me, dude. Ship it to Phoenix, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're the one that warned me that fish fillets do not hold. <sighs> They're not great. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Dude, you can house a fish fillet in a matter of seconds. Okay. <laughs> it's like not a thing to eat a fish sandwich from McDonald's. <laughs> that it's like barely even food. It's like it's spongy. soft air. I mean, it's just like boom, boom, boom. What? I mean, four bites and you're done. Like the bun is so pillowy soft that fish barely constitutes as anything that was solid. Lord knows what that fish actually looked like in the wild. That's a good point. You know? Square. <laughs> yeah, he fucking threw it away. 
I was shocked. Never. I would never throw away a, a fish fillet sandwich. I would put it in the refrigerator, eat it cold the next day, and it would be awful. And I'd be like, this sucks. <laughs> and then i go about my day. Yeah. And I That's do that what you do. Dude, all leftovers. It's almost like I eat it to honor the memory of when it was good. Dude, that's what I do down here. I order I order enough at dinner so I can have lunch for the next day, and then that's just <laughs> how I survive down here. This is my survivalist camp. I do not leave this hotel. Yeah. I I was talking to somebody about that. Who was like, well, isn't he going out? I'm like, no. I'm like, Dude, oh, I no. am in a shit part of Phoenix. It's already a shit city, and I am in the shit part of this hey, shit hey. city. All, all of our listeners in Phoenix, he doesn't mean it. We love you. We have zero <laughs> listeners in Phoenix, because they all fucking suck, nah, dude. and they don't understand what's cool. One stop Cac- listening, too, so. Oh, yeah, <laughs> she fucking sucks. She ain't in Phoenix, though. She's somewhere else. She is again now. Oh, how do you know? I mean, as of several months ago. I may or may not oh. have had to send her a box so she could send her computer back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we're talking about people oh, that we God, can't The even most do. randy sentence of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, I'm going to warn you guys now. I only watched one movie. Hell yeah. Yeah, and it was because of me. I ha- I've had no time this week. <sighs> I've only yeah, we know. Her. You gave us your schedule minute I, by minute. I only had enough. To, dude, but I, I fucking like hate stay awake or whatever. I don't know what the technical term is, but when I have no time to my, like when I can't pick what I want to do all day. Stay awake, the horror movie about video no, no, games. No, no, it's like revenge awake. It's oh. like when you go to bed, you like cram in shit, even though you know you shouldn't and you should go to bed just because it's like, well, now it's my time. That's never been a thing. Oh, dude, it's a thing. I me. definitely do it. Uh, revenge, revenge bedtime procrastination is the term. I just live my life because that's how this is the path that I've chosen. No, dude, you would like it. I we got we would get home every night, and then for my birthday, people bought me Legos because I'm a child. So I'd get in bed and I would turn on a show that I wanted to watch. What sixty day lock in or whatever? I've still been trying to keep up with that. Did you watch the jail show? Then I'd be building Legos, and I've only been able to complete half a Rhino, dude. I've had no time. All right, two things. Jail shows, I could never in one million years watch a jail show before I go to sleep. I would just dream <laughs> only about jail. I went through a brief stint three weeks ago where I had two nights in a row where I thought about jail. It was horrible, horrible. I ran guns in, out of Kansas City. What? You would not be that important. Dude, no, but here's the thing. It was a really lame operation. <laughs> <laughs> and like it was a sad state of affairs. We were sleeping in a barracks with all these oh, beds. <laughs> that was you, awful. You were like, do, do y'all have dreams? And then you wake up in the dream, and then you go back to sleep, and you're back in that dream. Yeah. No, I don't have any dreams. Horrible. You don't have any dreams? No, at least that I remember. Well, you're not a thinker. <laughs> I, I don't sleep much. <laughs> I can't. That is them. true. When you sleep for thirty minutes at a time. <laughs> Go fucking psycho. I think today I got up very late for work. I was supposed to be there at 830. Also, traffic's back. I don't. Randy, have you noticed? Uh, I did notice this morning. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, traffic's back. People are fucking again. So I had to drive down to the city in a half hour. Also pick up Chris and drop off Oksana. And I woke up at I was supposed to be there at 830. I woke up at, at 750. Yeah, so. Yeah, I need to get. I need to go to bed. Should we just have like a new segment on the show where it's Russell's life report? Yeah, yeah. Can you just give us a breakdown? Well, you know, every day. Normally, it's pretty boring, but also I don't get to like just you know spew this shit out at you in the hallway. Oh, also, I mean, frankly, you know, yep, you know, there things are opening up again. You're getting back out there in the world. So, oh yeah, we're yeah we're going to the movies this week. Oh, and I I kept uh, my promise. And I will wait till Saturday. Thank you, my darling. And I've told everybody, because everybody's like, we're going Thursday, right? <laughs> Including Randy. He was like, let's go without him. He doesn't even like fucking Saw. I'm down okay. to go on Saturday. Okay, tight. Okay, all right, all right. I, I will make an addendum. I will make an addendum. 
because I, I don't I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to hold it up from everybody else. I didn't no, think no, of the big I, picture. No, 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 no. I want to be very clear. I didn't think of the big picture of that, and I should have because you know it, that's fine. Please, you can absolutely do that. But let's just go again <laughs> on Saturday. Clark Little never thinks of the big picture. That is not true. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> I, no, That's I why I'm down here in Phoenix, baby. It was a because size I joke. get the big picture. That was all. Wait, what? It was like me telling you the wrong size to your Nikes earlier. You told me the wrong size? <laughs> yeah, so then you go buy shoes that don't fit. They were nine and a half, weren't they? No, they're nine. Okay. I really or thought are they were nine and a half. Russell, please, <laughs> I need to get new shoes. No, no, they're really nine. Okay. And also, everybody who I told, hey, man, Clark really wanted to watch this. I'm going Saturday. They all said, okay, cool, I, I could do that. So I think a lot of people are just going to, it's just going to be a fun old time. It'll be like before the pandemic. Okay. Clark's so we, <laughs> what time? What time? All right, let's go Saturday. I don't know. We don't have to do this on the show. Let's do Saturday. <laughs> okay, yeah. It'll be cool. But yeah, I haven't watched anything unless you want to talk about jail reality TV. No, come which on. is fucking great, by the way. I love that show, but terrible, horrible. Randy, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of jail shows either. I can't do it, man. It stresses me out. Oh, I except like except my favorite movie of all time is Brawl and Cell Block '99. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's barely jail. Like, he's in, like, the real jail for, like, 20 minutes tops. <laughs> and he's just crushing it when he's in there. He's literally crushing, you know, themers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great movie. I love that movie. It's pretty Randy good. your thoughts. Pretty good. Five stars. Like that. But, um, yeah, besides that, I, <clears throat> I di also didn't watch much this weekend. Uh, what do y'all do it? I uh, I may or may not have spent 12 hours at a hospital on Saturday. Oh, my God, Randy. <laughs> Vasectomy? No. You guys know. Tubes tied. No. That's right. Randy got the change done. <laughs> so I started a movie on the... Uh, I, <laughs> I started a movie Saturday morning on the Criterion Channel Ooh. called uh, Machine Gun McCain from what 1969. John McCain? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I never heard of this movie. Played by Machine Gun Kelly. It's a uh, it's an Italian movie. The director's name is Giuliano Montaldo. Giuliano uh, Avocado. <laughs> Giuliano Montaldo. <laughs> well, that's way better. But this movie takes place in America and stars Peter Falk, John Cassavetes, oh. and Gina Rollins. Oh. So I found it in the. Uh, section of Criterion Channel devoted to uh, Gina Rowland's movies, although she doesn't show up for a whole ton of the movie. Uh, I think it also has an Ennio Morricone score. Mm. Um, Morricone. But yeah, it's, a, it's very much like a B movie, like crime drama, uh, mob type of thing, but uh, there is lots of shots of San Francisco, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, Cassavetti's character, um, yeah, gets out of jail there and uh he's in san francisco and there's a bunch of shots they actually mentioned daily city in the movie too i didn't oh, see weird. any like actual daily city locations but when i don't he think he gets of, like, out of jail does he get out of alcatraz um no i don't think so i think it's probably what is that san quentin san quentin is north of the uh, uh, yeah. correct because he gets Folsom. out Folsom. Is that it? He gets out, and Folsom. then they drive over the Golden Gate Bridge into the city. So it's definitely Actually, over I there somewhere. I San Quentin and Folsom are pretty... I think they're both north here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> confirm yeah. Here. Um, but yeah, it's very much like a 60s, late 60s, early 70s, kind of like B-movie. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a comfort food to just watch uh, Peter Falk and Cassavetes and uh, Gina Rowland. So give it a shot if you like, oh. if you like that trio. Right, it San, looks San cool. Quentin San Quentin is uh southeast of San Rafael. Okay. All right. That's probably really where <laughs> or where he was. So that's that's North Bay. Are you gonna have nightmares now? Folsom's way north of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably be recording for another two hours, so <laughs> and Not Randy, uh Folsom is 
northeast of Sacramento. Okay, that's pretty far then. Yeah. I think I went I think I went through Folsom when I had to go through that uh was that stupid national park? I don't know. I'm not a big park guy. <laughs> Yosemite. Okay. okay. I've been there once well, or twice. Yosemite sucks, dude. All right. Oh, look at this rock. It's fucking pretty. Okay. And that wraps up a uh, little geography with Clark Little. <laughs> dude. That's, well, you can see that on our feed next week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> a little geography. Dude, you with gotta go to Little Clark. Rock. Actually, uh, the first season of that jail show I was watching was in Clark County. Nice. Wasn't he? No. Oh, no, he. Good. They get it. <laughs> they get it what dude was- I had like we use slack for work and there are people who will slack me on my slack it says my name C-L-A-R-K and then they write C-L-A-R-K-E you know I'm like yo I typo your name all the time and it I feel embarrassed even though nobody ever knows it if you ever send me an E no I don't do that Oh. Take take a guess. Clock. What would that be? No, with an O. Yeah. No. It's C L A R C K. You idiot! I know it looks so wrong. <laughs> I write it all the time. Like I don't know why, but I do. I write it all the time. C L A R Louis C K. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it looks really like. Type that into your computer. It oh, looks so wrong. Let, let, I don't know if you've known this about me, but I've had this name for quite some time, so I know pretty much all the spellings around it. Yeah, I pretty much, I've probably done the same thing multiple times. I probably weird. that may be the first way how I spelled my name. Oh, <laughs> I remember I had to I had to repeat kindergarten because my motor skills were so terrible. Really? Yeah, that's I I got held back. I did two tours of duty in kindergarten. <laughs> One more and you could have been in the clan. <laughs> what? <laughs> Think about it. Oh, you... Uh, that's, okay. <laughs> Not the best. A little clunky. <laughs> but it's there. It, right. You get there. KKK. All right. You gotta take a walk. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm willing to go on a stroll. It's pretty good. Oh, believe me. <laughs> Speaking of last Rainy's- names and uh, people that have had them for a long time. Okay. I watched the movie... <laughs> Um, by Gia Coppola. <laughs> All right. Oh shit! Uh, Gia. Relative of Francis Ford Coppola. I don't know who she is exactly. Um, I didn't look up the lineage. Um, but yeah, she uh, she directed. Th- uh, that's. I believe that she is the daughter of Sophia. Do they do okay. they make a poster of like, the Coppola family? Tree? I may be dead wrong. I'm sure. There's like, has one. anybody ever marketed that? Yeah, like put that on a shirt. It's just the Coppola family tree. <laughs> Couple of family trees. No, don't make that a fucking dude. Story. I like I like Palo Alto. Was that a Jimmy Buffett hit? <laughs> dude, that that all uh, that that was good. That's a hundred percent a Jimmy Buffett riff. R.I.P. We lost it. So uh, Gia Coppola's new film called Mainstream came out this past Friday. It's a it's a six ninety nine dollar rental on a Ooh. iTunes, Amazon, anywhere you can find things on demand, and uh, starring Andrew Garfield, Maya Hawk, Johnny Knoxville makes an appearance, and uh, another Coppola, <laughs> Jason Schwartzman, is in this. Uh, synopsis from Rotten Tomatoes: A young woman finds a path to internet stardom when she meets when she starts making videos with a charismatic stranger. Uh, so Maya Hawk, yeah, she's like a YouTuber uh, who stumbles upon Andrew Garfield's character one day when she's just like out, and he's kind of a he's a weirdo. He looks kind of like pseudo homeless, um, and she makes a video of him essentially like yelling at people in public to like stop like looking at their phones and stuff like that. Um, and then this video that she uploads to YouTube ends up getting like tons more hits than like she's used to. Like it gets, I don't know. Several thousand. She's like, yeah, my videos only usually get like 50 something uh, views or whatever. So she goes and tries to find him uh, again. And, you know, she just runs into him kind of like uh, around L.A. And then she uh, asks, asks him to start like making making videos with her. And they kind of like team up and he uh, he gets her to quit her job. And they start making uh, this show that essentially um, 
is kind of just telling people that uh, their phones are problematic and that social media sucks. Um, so it's not like the deepest like social media satire. <laughs> but Andrew Garfield in this movie is very good. I'm very into uh, weirdo Andrew Garfield between this and uh, Under the Silver Lake. I'm all about it. Um, and also Maya Hawke's really good too. They have, they have very good chemistry in this movie. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I know <laughs> what kind of guy you would be into, but I don't think I would have pulled Andrew Garfield out of the mix. <laughs> I don't know. He's a good actor. He's down dude, to, he's he down to get weird and play shitty people. He couldn't play Spider-Man, dude. They I don't kicked think him I liked him Spider-Man. in Spider-Man, but he's good. No one liked him in Spider-Man because he fucking sucked. <clears throat> I did. Tell I me what, he's, what are he's you good talking mainstream. about? <laughs> you liked the, you didn't even watch that franchise. I did. I'm not joking. I liked them, dude. That franchise was trash, man. <laughs> was it a franchise? I thought they only had there was two. two. Yeah, that's not a franchise. Dude. That semi franchise <laughs> was trash, man. Yeah, I liked them. You know what? I didn't. I didn't like them in uh under Clear Lake or whatever. What's this new? One? What's the new kids? <laughs> the the baby face guy. Who's the baby face guy? The new Spider Man. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You're Tom Holland? Table. Yep, there we go. That that child. <laughs> He's good. I like He's... him as Spider-Man. He's good. He's great. And Toby is a monster, but I like Toby. I don't like Toby. The, dude, Spider-Man 2 is one of the greatest movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Matt like that block, huh? <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's... it's Brawl and Cell Block 99, Spider-Man 2. These, I mean, these are flawless films. <laughs> well, Spider-Man 2 ends with um, the Dashboard Confessional song. <laughs> That's right. Oh, God. Vindicated. Vindicated. <laughs> Vindicated. Dude, dude I'm going to play that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that fucking song. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vape and play that. Dude, I, saw, I have seen Dashboard Confessional live oh, in concert sorry. did you cry no i, I saw him for free <laughs> i've been with the grown adult male who cried at randy's show <laughs> <laughs> may or may not have been on drugs but yeah that's tight you can tell <laughs> what well, dude randy randy plays those uh emotional guitar riffs dude yeah randy puked he cried <laughs> it was great you know they know they know the notes that uh, play straight to the hearts, man. All right, let's stop fucking around. You're threatening to have 18 movies to talk about. All so right. what the fuck are we gonna do? All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fucking have a good time, <laughs> baby. <laughs> we're gonna buy a fish fillet and fucking throw it away. All right. Last week they gave me Monday off. Ooh, that was a bad yeah. idea because <laughs> I watched five movies and you puked, in right? one day. Now, what I will tell you is in, in the past a little over a week, I have seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight, eight different movies. One of those movies I have watched three times <laughs> in the last week. We'll get to that at the very end of this episode. Um, so, can, I, can I tease that, that movie? Oh, would you do that now? You want to do that now? Just to tease it. All right, do a little tease. All right, here we go. Nice fucking sneakers, Dorothy. <laughs> we got a smile out of Randy. <laughs> he, wants, he wants to come over. I'm good. He wants to do it. All right, we're teasing it. What, so what are you talking about? Tom Clancy's Without Remorse, oh, Michael B. Jordan. Skip. Rated it two and a half stars. Pass. No need. You said two and a half, and then with your hand, you made the shocker symbol. No, I went like this. <laughs> no, you didn't. We have... Oh, fuck. We're not recording the video. Don't Is that do it? That. What are you supposed to do with your right. thumb? With the shocker. <laughs> Put the thumb down. It's like when people do the devil horns wrong. Tuck the thumb, dude. Oh, no. See? Okay. That, that and then that. <laughs> Which way is this... Like that's Wolfpack. I believe the, what is it called? The vodka, right? I don't know. Vodka? It's a uh, Jewish mysticism. 
You're supposed to be putting a circle of protection. Well, see, they do that for like Texas, you know, hook them horns. It's a hook them horns. It's different. You want to aim the fingers at somebody with the devil horn thing. That? No. What's okay, that? Okay, move on from that. What's this? <laughs> I think that's NWO too sweet. I Okay, good. That's why I want Wolfpack for life, baby. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> NWA oh, is pretty I- sweet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you just say the NRA or the NWA? <laughs> NWA. <laughs> Heard it here first. Randy Stat supports the NRA. All right. And I watched Hellraiser for the first time. Yay. Uh, I really like Hellraiser. I, I don't think I was prepared for how horny it was going to be. It's a very horny film. Yeah. Uh, lot, lots, of, lots of coitus. Uh, lots of S&M things. And very little Doug Bradley. You know, honestly, I think you should read Clive Barker. You'd be into it. He's kind of childish. So he's got some really dumb things that are clearly not scary. But he's got, they're very horny books. Here's the thing. I like, I like Clive Barker when he speaks. Yeah. He's, he's, he's very he's entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. That like, sounds good, man. I like Bob more. And plus he- All right, don't hit your head on the mic. You got mad at Bob me. Bob Barker's last... dead, man. Now is he? <laughs> also, know. Randy, did Clark yell at you for not stopping him last week with his chair squeaking? No, not yeah, really. Why don't you all tell me these things? Because you and yelled we did. at me. <laughs> well, yeah, we, I, I we, we told you about the other things that were making noise, yeah. but yeah, you didn't tell me about the chair squeaking. By the way, how loud was that when I hit my head on the microphone? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. fun. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> Now, can I tell you it I think I cut my head a little bit. <laughs> it does it does kind of hurt. Yeah, but if, dude, fucking Hellraiser is legit. The cinematography in that movie and the Looks character great. design, yeah. Looks great. It's now, a I, hell of a time. I almost watched Hellraiser 2 right after and then I was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's very different. You got to give it some room, but 2 is good. I like it. It's very different though. I really liked Hellraiser. Then I finally decided to catch up to the Blackwell Ghost. Yeah. Let me tell you. Randy, what do you know about the the Blackwell Ghost? I've heard of it, and that's about it. We've talked. I've mentioned that damn movie so many times on here. Uh, Randy, you got your revenge whenever I've been like, hey, has anybody ever seen Nomadland? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I've talked about it three times. Dude, I believe last time, what, we had a guest on here. Uh, Mary Beth, she came on and was talking about Blackwell. Wait, yeah, it was her. Dude, Blackwell's the uh, found footage movie with the guy who pilots a plane. Yeah. It's it's super crazy, because he's talking about, you know, that he's making a documentary about Ghost, because I don't even remember why the story's yeah. kind of lame of why he's doing that. He's like, and he's this country guy from Kentucky. He's like, well, I make zombie movies. They're not great. <laughs> and now I'm going to make a documentary. Let's go in my plane to now. Here's the thing. So they fly, <laughs> they fly from Kentucky to Pennsylvania. It takes them three hours. <laughs> In no universe should it take three hours to fly from Kentucky to Pennsylvania well, on this he, tiny little plane. He was drinking up there. Maybe he took a detour. That plane probably maxes out at 80 miles an hour. Also, did you love the runtime of that movie? Oh, it's great. I, now, it's great. No, the, the Black Oil Ghost is, is a lot of fun, and that's, that's mainly attributed to Turner Clay. Um, who is the the writer, director, and star? And um, also, if you want to have a good time, uh, get into the Reddit threads of the Blackwell Ghost. Um, it can be a hoot. So, this guy's a liar. <laughs> it's it's pretty wild stuff. Man, it's a trip. The the, the found footage horror um, subreddit. There was a dude on their post. It, he was like, you know, I'm tired of all these fucking fake found footage movies. We should be talking about real ones in this chat. And it's like, what do you even do with a dude like that? Like, I don't even, I don't know how to carry a conversation with that person. People are strange, man. Ooh, Send him the uh, snuff movie you played. Oh, right. Yeah, actually, that's a really good ant. <laughs> I should, because we did put the interview up with uh, James Dobbin. Oh, I, I Jones, should... you never say Jones. 
Do I need to? JDJ? Is James Dobbins Jones. It's like saying, uh, we never did the interview with Clark William. Gwilliam? It's like you're saying his name and his middle name. <laughs> That's some like medieval shit. <laughs> you weirdo. It's old English, bro. He's fucking Australian. <laughs> he lives in a former island prison Ooh. with flying foxes. We've been Get talking... the fuck out of here, Australia. We've been talking a lot of captivity. Are you sure you're going to have a uh, good sleep tonight? I thought about moving to Australia, but I got over that shit quick. I did too. I don't like the bugs down there. It's so, dude, it, the, it's too crazy over there. Is also, it less crazy in New Zealand? Uh, probably. It seems too crazy in Australia. It, it's weird to live on a continent where there's like literally a wasteland. <laughs> like, yeah. People, yeah, people can't live out here. I don't. Dude. People live in two cities in Australia. <laughs> you did it again. You said two, but you did the shocker. Because I have no control of my no, pinky. No, no. Why do you keep doing that? What do you? I have no control doing? of my pinky. I, as a reminder, I got held back in kindergarten because of my motor skills. <laughs> They're like, this guy's pinky's out of control. I did. I did two tours of two. <laughs> oh, God. All right, if you keep doing okay. that, I'm going to record the damn Zoom, and we're going to be like um, a podcast we hate. Then I rewatch The Fugitive, because it's one of the greatest movies of nice. all time. And I came up with a great name uh, for a dog. Uh, I would name him Tommy Lee Bones. <laughs> <laughs> too many, too, too long. I call him Tommy Lee. No. Dude, if I had an American bulldog named Tommy Lee... That would be the best. <laughs> I don't think it works without the bones. Dude. Tommy Lee Bones. I'll tell you, Tommy I Lee Bones. Her, her dog. Tommy Lee Bones. Uh, her mutt is named Marigold. And it is the most irritating thing. Like, Marigold. Marigold. Come here. Marigold. Marigold. It's like it's too many fucking words. Marigold, mother needs you. <laughs> mother needs you, Marigold. And, you know, we work in like... Uh, Importing, exporting, and that dog fucking barks at everybody who walks by. Oh, that's a work dog, dude. No, Marigold, it's a work dog. Work, Marigold's a terrible work dog name. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no. I, you we know, had, our work dog's name was Bell. That's a good work dog name. <laughs> Actually, I, you know what? Uh, apologies to Marigold. Um, last time I worked, I was driving the work van, and I took it out of park and I put it in reverse, and the van wasn't moving. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I drove forward a little bit and then reversed back hard. And I heard a pop. And you killed Marigold. <laughs> and I thought it popped a fucking tire. And I got out and I didn't see anything. And as I was driving away, I noticed I ran over her favorite ball. And Marigold was sitting at the fence <laughs> staring at me. <laughs> and I remember, I remember it was going through my head. I'm like, am I going to lie about this? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I felt like the dog was going to snitch me out. Dude, you just cucked that dog. I, I came, I owned up to it. I came back and the ball was still out there on the road and I picked it up and I'm like, what, am I going to play this off and just be like, well, look what I found. But I, I went in there and I was just like, man, I'm sorry. I ran over the fucking ball. I did the right thing. It's <laughs> fucked up. <dude. laughs> Apologies, just, Marigold. How was the ball cucked a dog. <laughs> Tommy Lee Bones. After the fugitive, uh, all right, we need to talk about <clears throat> Kevin. Kevin. I got two movies here, and I can go into more detail on one of them. You choose which one. I will give all three of you a vote, which could yield to a tie, which I hold the tiebreaker. Okay, okay cool. <laughs> Very no, ornate no. rules. Get, wake up creepy if it's a tie. Your choice. Okay, all right, deal. Your choices are Dark Web Cicadia 3301. <laughs> Is that part of the title? That's 100% the title. Is that a year? We will explain if you choose this 3, movie. 3,301? Or Jacob's Wife. But where's his ladder? Randy, your throat. <laughs> I'm going Dark Web Cicada, as it's pronounced. Oh, bitch. No, what did I say? Cicadia? Yeah. yeah. That's that what we say nice. in the South. That's what we say in the South. Don't worry about it. Oksana, what are you going to vote? Same. Dark Web Cicada. Whatever it's called. Cicada. Oh, how could there be a tie then? Yeah, I thought there was three movies that were. 
Oh, that's true. Yeah, you teased the tie, motherfucker. Well, because I was looking at the other one, then I forgot. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going dark web. I would have went that anyway. All right, so briefly, Jacob's wife. Oh, God damn. Well, I mean, I had to talk about it. Um, Jacob's wife, directed by Travis Stevens, starring former guest of this show, Barbara Crampton, and oh, future guest of the show, Larry Fessenden. All right. <laughs> Um, you know what? <sighs> There've been some mixed reviews about uh, Jacob's wife. I did enjoy it, but it took some time. It really took about forty minutes uh, for me to finally click in, just because again we're dealing with a a a movie that takes place in the South. They shot this movie in Mississippi. They don't really say they're in Mississippi, but they did shoot in Canton, and you can tell that it's downtown Canton. And, um, you know, and he plays a minister in the South that wears a collar first there. I don't buy that shit at all. And it just like, you, yeah, the, the, the church vibes, they don't really get. And, um, you know, it, it's fine. I, I, I got past that. It took a little time, but I just let it go because I'm a gentleman now. Hey, and we I got understand a punk in there. Is he in it? Yeah, he plays Deputy Colton. Okay, I didn't even realize it was him because wow. CM Punk sucks. A true chameleon of an actor. So Travis Stevens is the guy who did the girl on the third floor that uh, CM Punk was in. So oh. that makes sense to me. Did she consent? I think that's the name of that movie. I never saw. But um, anyway, I, I did. I did ultimately enjoy Jacob's Wife, and uh, because I like how they tied everything together, and I think that Fessenden and, and Crampton are a great duo. Did and, they mention uh, the I enjoyed it. You're an idiot. <laughs> also, that was the movie you're not talking about? I just wanted to say that, yeah. Because, <laughs> baby, did I blew through all those other ones? I've only been talking for like 20 okay, I minutes. Know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. <sighs> Dark Web Cicada 3301. Directed by Alan Richton, Richson, <laughs> <clears throat> take two. Dark Web Cicada three three zero one, directed by Alan Richson. That's, That's a weird name. Barely better. It is weird. Rich Richson, Richson. Yeah, that name sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. I'm gonna cancel him for next week. <laughs> so, who is Alan Richson? He was in a little show called Blue Mountain State, where he played the main fucking bro guy. This guy is mainly an actor. He wrote and directed this movie, which Oksana teased about a month or so ago. Um, guys, this is not a horror movie by any stretch of the imagination. This is a comedy slash thriller slash suspense, Action which is everyone's favorite <laughs> genre. This movie's insane. It. I haven't seen a movie like this in a long time. It's a Lionsgate, and it's a perfect Lionsgate movie. Because Lionsgate's movies can be fucking bananas. <laughs> and make no goddamn sense. Ooh, you're looking at an hour 44? Let me tell you something. Loved it. Okay, wow, okay. Well, I gave it three stars, but... Okay, okay <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Okay, so the it it it's a rough start. It starts off with um, voiceover exposition. We got a very handsome, rugged, smart guy. And if there's anything I hate more than the stereotype of the handsome, rugged, smart guy, let me know. Slide in my DMs and tell me. I don't even know what that means. Okay, <laughs> but I, I really don't. It's so annoying. And Randy, they do that thing. What was that? It's Kevin Spacey movie with uh, the poker, and they do all the numbers in the air. Twenty one was that the one? I think so. Yeah, Swordsman. Yeah, Matrix. <sighs> it's, it, it's just and then they try to get cute with the graphics, and they turn them sideways, and then like the numbers, and then he's spewing off all these statistics about this guy's tip that he didn't leave, but that he <laughs> should have left. And oh god, it was. I was like, this is this is gonna be rough. Then it turns into like the hangover. It dude, it turns into a buddy comedy. 
Ron Funches shows up, and I love Ron Funches. What the fuck? And he's hilarious. He's he's doing the Ron Funches thing. And um, the main guy is the poor man's Chris Hemsworth. Oh, okay. um, And he can kind of deliver a joke. Um, and then the main girl, who plays a fake lesbian, um, you'll understand that when you watch the movie. She's very annoying. Their chemistry is terrible. Uh, but the jokes go. I got several good laughs out of this movie oh, um, because it's it, the the tone is strange. It's hard to navigate the tone because it sort of shifts uh, in strange directions, and it goes very like gross, broad humor, and then it goes back to hack Hollywood town. Uh, and the the whole conceit of the story is painfully dumb about the guy basically uh, got mad at the guy who didn't leave a tip, hacked into his computer, stole his bitcoins, got tracked by the government (laughs) after he stole his bitcoins. Then they said, oh, have you been receiving messages from the secret club, Dark Web Cicadia 3301? And he said, yes. In fact, I have been receiving messages. I'm trying to figure out the hack. And then the fake lesbian librarian says, yeah, I'm going to help you. Let's go to the library. Can I don't hack in the library? Let me do it. I got to do my admin code. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, what's that? A homeless guy jerking off? Ha ha ha. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> it's very strange. And then Ron Funches get there and he's like, oh, I'm an art professor. Let me go flirt with this gay guy. And then he goes, I'm not gay, but I'm just happy. I'm cute. He thinks I'm cute. I'm Ron Funches. And then they go and they do some hack and stuff and then they get there and then the, the little gay guy runs after him and then they get kidnapped by these other hackers who were hacking them because they were ahead of them in the hacking game. And then they try to kill him, but then the FBI comes in. But all this is taking place while he's in a grand jury hearing. So it's flashbacks. And then in the grand jury hearing, he's navigating the the story. But then you realize that he's making stuff up. And then it goes to the other side of the grand jury where all the FBI agents are like, what the fuck? That didn't happen. I didn't fuck that guy in the asshole. And then it shows him like he's fucking him in the ass. It's watch the movie. Three stars. (laughs) Wow. I I thought it was going to be found footage, (laughs) like screen life or something. And no, no, dude. Why you call it? If you're going to make a movie and you're going to call it dark web, it better be. Oh, the dark web, I don't think, is mentioned in the entire movie. <laughs> and it's, So I'm guessing it's not set in 3301. Also, I will tell you this. Every day, every day, well, Monday through Friday, those are the only days that matter because I'm a working man in America. But Monday through every day, I listen to a local radio show All right. out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi that does, uh, it's a am radio station and they do one hour a day talking about the university i went to it it is the worst show (laughs) ever made and it makes me so angry so many days because the guy the host of the show is the worst radio he is the worst radio host i've ever heard he asks the worst questions and he and you know anytime he asks a question that's terribly worded and uh just he he he's completely clueless to anything and he just right right <laughs> that's all he knows how to say and he's like am i wrong about that he's just i hate him anyway uh how does that work in the other the other ho- i'm pulling a russell right now okay the other host used to uh be a punter for the university i like this guy but he's just he's a, he's also a preacher and he's just a good old boy and like they do remotes at the uh tractor uh dealer in town. Whoa. Yeah. And they're that's one of their main sponsors. So like once a week they're there and they're like, What what's the new deal on the new lawnmowers down here? Well, we got the new Husqvarna that came in. Like, <laughs> that's the show. I listen to it because it's insane sometimes. But anyway, he was trying to be cute and he made a reference instead of the dark web. <laughs> Oh no! He called it the black web. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed for three days. And then they they fired him. Oh, you know he was probably looking it up on www.theblackweb.com. <laughs> Oxon, can you go back to the poster of the movie? 
And Clark, I know you you enjoyed this film and you mm-hmm. gave it a Randy three. Um, did you happen to catch the tagline? Don't a pull dark it web, up. Cicadia three three zero one. Don't pull it up. You're looking at it. I don't see a tagline. All right, take a guess. All right, Randy, take a guess. The web can't get any darker. <laughs> I, I kind of, you know, that feels real to me. You're actually kind of good at this game. I don't all right, know. all right. Here we go. <laughs> Here's Dark Web Cicada 3301. All lives matter. <laughs> what? Okay. No. It, okay, here's, here's the actual tagline. A true hacker story that never happened. Is that a fucking spoiler? Right? The third act- Actually, actually, that's not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Given fucking... given given the context of the film, that's not bad. It's worthless. That may Fuck be that. the best writing in the whole movie. Oh damn! <laughs> you oh, did gosh. come home and you were pretty excited about this film. It's pretty. It's pretty crazy, man. It's a weird movie. All right, I Wait, had fun. All right, I'm I'm not gonna watch it. Okay, are we gonna bring it home with now, Big Daddy? The ne- Do you want to set it up? I'm fine letting you do it, or I can. All right. Well, we'll just say. Uh, I'll, that... No, I'll, I'll do it. Now, I, oh I was really God. looking forward to hanging out with you and watching movies. You say day. this, but I've saw you for like five minutes, and you fell asleep I, I when I saw you because you're a bitch. Terrible. I, was, I felt awful. I was very hungover. Oksana had puked out her organs the night before, but we crawled out of bed at like a fucking very early two thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> I came down and then I was like, I can't do it. I went back up. We have to learn you can't do this shit no more. Uh, uh, Starting today, she gave me beer right before this because y'all were. I I never get to drink with Randy, so I was gonna have a beer. I got um, in (laughs) Hume, the Indian Pale Ale from uh, yeah, Ghost Town. So right now, this is one the Nirvana um, song. Yeah, not in Bloom. You. What does inhume mean? Is that a real word or did they make that shit up? It's inhumane. No, but it's just inhume. Oh, inhumane. Main. Like Duh. inhumane. Yeah, I'm very good with puzzles. Yeah, you are. <laughs> it was terrible. that extra year you did in K. That's right. Um, now, I really wanted to watch a movie with you. And you had been begging us to watch a movie. We hadn't been home. We couldn't do it. So I was like, no, we'll wait. When you come home, we'll watch it. And uh, I had the pleasure of rewatching for the third time with the what, third time, right? You had watched it. It, twice was, it was my third time. So my first, your third of uh, Bad Ben Seven, The Haunted Highway, and uh, you know, uh, how do you set that movie up? Well, here, you know, what? here is the greatest no, no, movie no. of all time. Actually, let's let uh, Tom Riley do it. Here we go. Guess what? I got a new job. Doing what, you might ask? I now work for the ride-sharing service Drop You Off. And you may be saying to yourself, Tom, don't you need a car that gives people rides? Guess what? Tom Riley's got a car, baby! That's it. <laughs> That's what the movie's That's about. That's the opening of the movie. Nigel Buck got a car. He's going to do Drop You Off. And uh, Clark, he was... <sighs> It seemed like Clark was either extremely dehydrated, had been doing peyote, or was just losing his mind. Because he kept talking about how much fun this movie was, and how weird it was, and the tone and the pacing. And he, he, I think you described it as pure chaos. Now, I think you're, you're right. It's fucking weird. There's really, like, not... Like, the English language can't put into words what the fuck you... What is happening in this movie. It's kind of like David Lynch's Lost Highway, except that there's a clear, like, story happening. It's just completely unpredictable and, like, nonsensical. And, um... No, there's no connections. Now, the the thing I played earlier, the, like, nice sneakers bit, I, I think he, he was improv a lot of these lines, right? If like one would hope and, and those, those are the lines that land. Now we know Nigel Bach to be an improv artist. I mean, that's all bad Ben was is him walking around with his phone. And he makes up a movie. So in this film, you know, it's not unusual to be given 
oh, I, I should say it's a Halloween film. And we are constantly rewarded with treats as he makes fun of his entire cast. And it feels like all off the cuff. But I'd be amiss if I didn't mention that he's also got some scripted shit that's equally bizarre. Now, I didn't know if it was going to be a party fell, but I pulled the first bit when he gets in the car and he's fucking around with the radio. Would you should we play that or do you want to the Jesus Christ? No, no, no. Where he's uh, choosing a voice for his navigation. System. Oh, yeah. You can absolutely play that. OK, here don't we go. Don't play the jump scare. No, no, I'm not playing anything. I, there's I, now I will tell you, I really wanted to pull a bunch of shit because I'm like, I knew how much you liked this movie. And I was I was scrubbing through it. Dude, there's a million fucking things you could pull out of this goddamn. It's film. so much. It's so much. And dude, it. it oh, I can't. All right. I'll just briefly get into it before we play that clip. This is the best he can possibly be. Ooh. And it's it's glorious. Okay. A compliment, I, not an insult. It's glorious. Um, because and here's why. I was so excited after I I, I mean, I was on a literal high after watching The Haunted Highway. Like, my mouth dropped at the end of it because it just took me by surprise because I was just on the ride the whole time. And I was like, oh, he threw that in? Because I it, it actually was a reference. <laughs> it's, anyway, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so much fun. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'll go back and, and watch the rest. <laughs> and it didn't stick. Because immediately you go into the older films and he's trying so hard to you know, um, have all these plot points and, but you know, the, the storytelling on that end is not his strength, you know? Yeah. Um, he leans very heavily on exposition and when it's not, uh, surrounded in just lunacy or even levity, like it suffers. And the whole thing with bad Ben seven haunted highway is that, you always have that uh, lacquer of levity. You know, there's yeah. always something funny happening. And so when he's trying to progress the story, it's like, who cares? Because this is so ridiculous. And um, it's he's not trying to do anything else. And I think we do get a lot of Nigel off the cuff here. Yeah. And that is when he's at his best. If you oh, remember the second time sure. we interviewed him, he just talked for an hour. I don't remember us saying anything. He was just going on these rants. And um, I, I honestly think that plays to it. There, there's, there's one incredible jump scare in here that is the funniest jump scare of all time, as far as I'm concerned. And it's all with his reaction. And um, he's got... There's, the jokes work in here, but when the jokes don't work, they still work. <laughs> Actually, s- dude, Lost Highway is a good way to describe that movie. It's very like noir on the road, where a lot, it's like if we're not looking at a, a dashboard cam aimed at the interior of the car, yeah. we're looking at it up front, and it's just dark road, because it's a spooky Halloween night. Right. And then when you really think about it, you realize how insane this uh it's the worst rideshare app of all time oh now i will tell you the interface he had for the app kudos because like there's an effort that was made it was the junkiest looking thing you've (laughs) ever seen in your life it looked like trash but it was something i was like okay that that's an effort i'll give you that what the fuck was it called pick you up drop you off drop you off I just remember the U because it was yellow. Yeah. I was like, what? like his so fake camera prompt was so weird. So again, like when he's doing the rideshare app, he picks them up and then he's like, all right, where are we going? Like <laughs> that doesn't happen. And, you know, and then there's like, oh, can we stop by here? Yeah, sure. No problem. And, the, you know, it, nothing is akin to what an actual rideshare app is, you know, the function is, but who gives a shit? But um, no, you're, man. no, it's funny because when we were watching it, you mentioned how the thing you like least about Nigel Box storytelling is his clunky exposition. Yeah. Yet this movie, it really did. It really yearned for like the rules of the app 
because when I rewatched it again, I'm like, this is the fucking weirdest. Like, like I would have loved if he had like set up rules that he could have broke because he's very chatty. Like he talks to everybody that comes in there and they clearly oh. don't want it. But Just drive. Like, they all sit, they all go shotgun. And I'm like, every what? single one. What is that? I'm every like, single one goes shotgun. Like if like he could have made like some fake prompt that's like, oh, they have to ride shotgun. Like that's a weird format for drop you off. I think it would have been better if they would have been in the back seat. I'll I'll tell you though, it it's like he wrote a script, he let people read it one time, and then he's like, We're shooting now. And then he just I don't dude, it's good. But the gags are funny. It just it just works. And also the runtime, he finally gets it. This thing's like 72 minutes, man. Yeah, it's quick. It, it's 72 minutes, and it, when it starts, it starts. Like, no. we're off to the races. I'm very excited. Randy, make sure you're paying attention. You look inebriated. <laughs> Are you ready for some Nigel Bach riding? Yeah, I'm here. There we go. All right, so he, <laughs> he buys a van from a, a dude, I guess, is named Jose. <laughs> and... uh Hey, Jose. We, we, we are transported from the interior of a garage, an empty garage, to the middle of nowhere. He's just kind of in the wilderness with his van. And he gets in and, um, yeah, he uh, has to pick a voice for his navigation. Uh, here we go. Now, according to this, I have to pick a voice. Number one, Kevin Spacey. Hi. This is Kevin Spacey. No, that's oh, I'm sorry. You don't like this Number voice. Two, Jeff Why don't Goldblum. you try? Oh, yes, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, this is the uh, drop you off uh, dash cam. Number three. Yes, yes, this yes. one's perfect. <laughs> this is the drop you off dash cam. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <sighs> Door ajar. Dude. The Jeff Goldblum, I, I do. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dude, the Kevin Spacey doesn't even sound like Kevin Spacey's neighbor. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, I love it, though. Uh, when that happened, I just shook my head. It's like, oh, Nigel. No, so that clip I played earlier. Here, let me play it again. Nice fucking sneakers, Dorothy. So he he's driving up to pick up a, a rideshare person. And when he's pulling up, it's very clear. Like, just as an audience member, you instantly notice this dude's red shoes. And it feels like he could Let me explain something to you. I've watched the movie three times. Never, never noticed. noticed. See something about the red shoes? <laughs> the yes. diaries, dude. Uh, yeah, but it's, I don't know. I feel like he's kind of more aware of just like film and like how audience will react to it. He's got some goofy. Well, he's made 46 movies. movies at this point. dude. <laughs> he's got, Oh man. Should we, should we give a little bit of the plot? I'm not convinced that people listening will run out and watch this movie. Like they You're should. You're wrong. Do it. Live life. Okay. We could, we could tell a little bit more and take your vaccine and watch it in the streets with your friends. Now I'm unmasked. Like, like most movies that are, you know, not made with a huge budget or, you know, a plethora of talent, which I'm not saying this doesn't have, because Nigel Bach is, as Clark put it, at his best here. Also They're, wearing a sick fedora the whole movie. Dude, every fucking turn of this movie, some new weird plateau of, like, fucking bizarre is, is reached. And I mean, there's decapitations. There's like, you know, I don't even want to say that because when you watch it, it's it's fucking like you're, I don't know, you're unfolding origami to find a uh, chain letter. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. We're talking cattle like decapitation it, or human? Oh, shit. It's My favorite band, right bro. <laughs> He's got a shirt on right now. <laughs> yeah i don't dude it's fucking good um again i i was very hungover and i did i was in and out when i was watching it with clark and it felt so bad we didn't have in and out man i know i was in and out of consciousness i would fall into these rem cycle sleeps of dreams of jail and i'd wake up sweating stealing my material you always have <laughs> it's worked out well for me 
Dreams of JL. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Damn. Her and Ben Affleck. She's back? No, it's Jennifer Love, dude. Dude, Randy, you're keeping up on the news. I didn't know you knew they were back together. Oh, dude, I always keep up on the Afflecks. Dude, it's very important. It's a good Wait, time who's for back America. together? J Lo oh, and on. Affleck. Ben. Benifer, dude. She she moves quick, dude. She just broke up with A Rod. Yeah. He just broke up with uh what's her name from Knives Out? Oh, I didn't and, know. And Adonis. Adonis. Yeah. Dude, Randy, can we have a, a segment where you do like Hollywood gossip? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Dude, he goes from Anna de Armas to J Lo. J Lo's old as shit. He'll be like, Fred Armisen was seen outside of her Lowe's. <laughs> you can give me pictures to give Oksana. We can put it up on YouTube. I like that bit. Also, I had a very good one for Clark. What? But it's got a video component, so we'll have to work on it. Video killed the radio started. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Would that be suicide? Come on, give me something. Don't tempt me. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Five stars. Bad Ben. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, I didn't watch anything. I, um, what, Clark will know this. I haven't done a lot of work this week. Not because I uh, don't want to. I actually am kind of like starved for it now. Bless you. I saw you sneeze. And Thank um, you. This thing has a mute button. It's great. Oh, yeah. You need it. And um, I'm See, dying. Watch this. Are you ready? I know he's eating right now. <laughs> Which, if we were in Is the that same a room, chip? It... <laughs> oh, I fucking hate it, dude. I hate chewing. We got some See ASMR fans off? out there. That's not ASMR. That's mukbang. <laughs> that's true. Even even the name is grosser. Now <laughs> it's ASM. It's ASMR. All right, break it mukbang. down. Mukbang. Oh my god. Mark Marin, my words. <laughs> that was dead to me, dude. You give me no credit for that. Um. Anyway, uh, you want to tease the interview? Because I pulled a clip for it. I don't know how to work it in. We tease it in the in the other intro. But all right. Um, well, then let me just say this. Uh, what we talk uh, bullets of justice. God, I couldn't remember the name. And uh, in the interview, I think I mentioned uh, Danny Trejo at his best. And I just wanted to pull my my favorite quote of Danny Trejo in that movie and just play it for you. Uh, I'm going to dedicate this one to Randy, and uh, here we go. Don't cry for pussy. Life is shit. But this is what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. It's very important. We have to get this out there. Uh, right before you joined us, I was trying to find an interview with you on like YouTube or something, because normally we talk to a lot of horror directors and indie filmmakers, and the podcast game is just, there's no quality control, and there are a million podcasts. So normally, I can find other ones and kind of parse through them, because most of them are unlistenable. And uh, I, I didn't see you on anything. I'm, how many American interviews have you done? Uh, I think I, I never did an interview. I really hate that. I don't, I don't know why, but really, really hate to to give interviews because uh, I'm always uh, sound stupid. I don't know why. <laughs> no, well, just, see, I, I think maybe, this is why it's a perfect match because we always sound stupid. <laughs> Therefore, we're, we're going to even each other out. It's no problem. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting nervous always when I start to explaining something, I'm losing words. And plus, my English is not the best one, not, not the, the richest one. So that's why I always uh, reject interviews because it, I feel silly. <laughs> but well, let's well, see. Have no worries because, again, English is my le native language and I'm still not great at it as well. So <laughs> probably already <laughs> stepped ahead of me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Mushmouth Magoo over here. You you also you share a similar accent to uh my my girlfriend's uh father who's here Oksana if you want to say hi hi and you share hi. The same first name too yeah you're you're much easier to understand and uh <laughs> it, that was it took me a while to not I don't know to like lean into that and be like oh I need to explain this because her dad you know he was a boxer he was a firefighter 
He's a. Uh, uh-huh. Your dad was a boxer. Yeah, in the Soviet Union, he was like a yeah, award-winning God, boxer. I know. Your dad was Rocky Four. <laughs> <laughs> So but no, Oksana, where are you from? You're from Russia or? Um, Odessa. I was born in Odessa. Uh, Odessa, huh? mm. Ukraine. Ukraine. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you understand? Did you understand? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I've been trying to get her to get back on her Russian because I'm like, one day we're going to have children and I want them to be bilingual because being trapped in the English language is not a cakewalk. <laughs> yeah. And especially now we got a bunch of like language tactics going on. People trying to change a definition of words for like, propaganda purposes and stuff and i i heard of uh an intellectual talking about how you're free of that when you're bilingual i and think i think that we're finally taking the turn as far i i think with the younger generation they're they're much more adept to that and i think that you cool. know the spanish language obviously is is creeping more and more into the mainstream of america so i think we're slowly getting there because dude we're <laughs> way way far behind because yeah. you think about you know europe and every you know like, how many languages do you speak, Valer? Uh, I I speak uh, I speak Russian, but very little. I I used to 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 learn in school, but I was young, so I I almost forgot everything. I speak English, Bulgarian, Russian, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I I can say hi in th- less languages than you speak. <laughs> yeah, right. Здравствуйте. Well, see, the language is funny because my um, my sister, they adopted a child uh, from Hungary when he was four years mm-hmm. old. And when they first got him, uh, they, they had to spend six months over there to sort of, um, you know, relate to him and, and sort of, you know, build build a relationship and a bond. And within those six weeks, he spoke zero English. And within, uh, I'd say, six months of being in America, remembered zero Hungarian. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is the most difficult language. In the oh. world, Hungarian. It's horrible. Oh, really? I've heard uh, yeah. this. Yeah. I've heard this. I mean, English is no cakewalk. English is mm-hmm. English is pretty tough from what I understand. You know, we've got a lot of, you know, different affectations and and tones and, you know, words that don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also the g- Greek language, because I'm uh, visiting uh, often Greece, uh, Greece. Greek language is also very, very tough. What's going on in Greece, man? Uh, everything is calm. I mean, it's normal, like everywhere in the world. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, yeah, I, I have fantasies of, of visiting Greece. Oh, no. Just maybe, maybe like old Greece, just me just walking around on a beach eating feta cheese. I think that's essentially what my fantasy <laughs> comprises. Mm. <laughs> just a lot well, of goat's milk. Yeah, Greece is very nice. I'm dreaming to to shoot uh, the second part of Bullets of Justice in Greece because it there are amazing places, very very creepy and it's nice. Have you ever uh, filmed in in Greece before? Yeah, I I, I shot some uh, advertisements in Greece in music videos, but never something bigger than a short. Russell, what was that Greek film we saw? At the Alamo, like five years ago, Shepherds of. Uh... Oh, I don't know. What? Oh, what was that? It was this bizarre Greek film we saw. Are you sure? Was it the Alamo? Mm hmm. 100%. It was like the second movie I'd ever seen there. I have no idea. All right. It doesn't matter. It, <laughs> why, where were you going with that? I don't know, it was Greek. I was like, what is that Greek movie we saw? Shepherds of. No, uh, Shepherds isn't enough. It was something shepherds. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So you speak a bunch of languages. How come you chose English for, and I don't want to jump right into Bullets of Justice because I had another segue where, you know, the other language mm-hmm. you can speak very fluently is the language of film. Because you are, you are a... Uh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Russell. <laughs> because I, I'm shocked that uh, you're not very comfortable with English. I mean... The film, I, I swear, it seemed like somebody from the South just wanted to really give it to the action films and make a true parody, and yet while still loving the genre. And it feels very American. And, and I'm curious why you chose to do it in English. Because actually, uh, the, the, the movie is very, uh, very crazy, but actually we, we, our target was to, to deliver it to to. St- to US and maybe later to make it bigger with uh, more money. 
actually that was our idea to to get a, a bigger producers with bigger money and, and make the movie bigger not because it, it 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 needs to be small but i think now it's too small we need a a, a, a big more uh, size wow you know we talked to a lot yeah. of uh, indie horror filmmakers on here and we've, we've talked to a couple of people who've done like um, action parodies and we've talked to a lot of people who were asking for more money and I just in the back of, you know my heart goes out to them but I'm like I don't know what a more money movie <laughs> with you would look like but in this case I, I think they could throw what you could do a Marvel movie and pull it off I can't believe I can you talk about how much Bullets of Justice cost I'm super yeah, curious. Sure. Yeah, it cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Unbelievable! <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but because actually we cannot count the budget because we 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 did a lot of a lot of stuff with friends. Uh, a lot of friends help us, so it's uh, actually I cannot count the and also actually we it was two men show. I mean. I was almost everything in the movie. So the other part of everything in this movie was Timur, the main actor, the composer, the producer. The... You understand? Actually, we, we shot it as a like like a, a student movie with friends, with a lot of help. With So it's uncountable, the budget. It, I can't believe it's $250,000. It, you have so many fat dead bodies that... <laughs> I alone right there, I feel like that should have been a million. <laughs> yeah, but in Bulgaria, everything is, is very cheap. I mean, you can, you can uh, hire extras and let them go completely nude for like $100 per, $100 per day. So it's, it's not so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, we, you kind of appeared on a radar because Amazon Prime is where we like to hang out and watch uh, random movies. And I think, oh my God, what was it, like five years ago? One of the writers on our blog um, spoke with the writer of Bullets of Justice and he was, or the producer? Who was it? Timur. Okay, yeah. Timur. Yeah, yeah and, and he was pitching the film and I just remember, I thought it was so ambitious. And we always hear people at um, horror conventions talking about these big movies they want to make. If only somebody would give them a shot. And it never comes out right. Except that fucking music video is amazing. And um, I, where did this project come from? Thank you. Uh, Bullets of Justice. Yeah. Huh? Oh. Oh, did yeah. you? Did, did we lose I, you there? <laughs> Oh, first, uh, yeah, sometimes but we're good. Actually, uh, our friendship with you starts because our oh, hello. Yeah, you're yep, there. It sounds here. like you're cutting in and out. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Timur is a musician. Valeria, are you still there? Yeah. I'm do you hear me? You're, yeah, you're, you're coming in and out. Uh, yeah, you're dropping uh, in and out a little bit, but you sound uh, better now. Uh, how we, do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, you're good now. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I was saying that uh, and years ago, Timur contacted me because originally he's a musician. He's not an actor. He's not a producer. And he contacted me through some Bulgarian guy to shoot the music video for his band called Project Zenit. And this is how we met in Bulgaria. We shoot a couple of videos. And after the last one with the pics, the, 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 did you ever watch the craziest one with the pics? Oh, I don't know. What, which one is that? Uh, uh, actually, the, the last video that we shoot together he said, let's do something really, really bloody and really crazy. I don't care <laughs> who, who we're going to watch it. And then this idea about the pics came up in my, in my head. And we shot a music video, which is uh, with the same idea. And we even used some of the shots of the video in the movie with the fat people, 
blah blah anyway <laughs> and uh, <laughs> after the the music video released nobody watched it even in kazakhstan the people was uh, <laughs> vomiting they said what the fuck is this <laughs> but, <laughs> but timur came again in bulgaria and says man i have some flat in dubai i want to sell it and i want to put all the money to do a movie i will i will i, I will start started in the movie I will be the lead actor. Let's let's make fun. Let's waste this money. I don't use this apartment anyway, so let's waste this uh, money doing uh, fun for us and and let's see what will gonna happen. And and this is how it all all starts. Dang! And I like um, referring to that as wasting money because me and Clark we, we just watched it again, and it seems like you guys didn't waste a dollar everything set design the casting like like you flew out danny trejo and congratulations like as a horror fan when you see like a tony todd or a danny trejo or a robert england kind of pop up in a movie it's almost like a warning like don't watch this it, there's going to be a little bit of money they mostly paid him he's going to show up he's going to like ham it up and then he'll be out yeah and now when danny trejo was there he's got the perfect look for your like Mad Max dystopian film. And it's like, this could work. And then your movie opens so strong where we got the like Western wanted sign going on. We have a dude in full prosthetics being killed. There's no holding back on the gore. And then you get Danny Trejo in his, what probably my f is now my favorite five minutes of him on screen. And. Oh, thank you. No, it's so good. Like what was your, um, what was your strategy to using him in the film? Actually, actually, we, we really want when we when we first start to uh, thinking, dreaming about how this movie must look like. Actually, our imagination about this bunker when all the sur survivors are there to put there some uh, famous porn stars, some musicians, some football uh, soccer players, and uh, but uh, actually for the for the character. Uh, for Danny, Danny's character, we imagine Michael Dudikov <laughs> or, or some old karate guy like uh, oh, um, okay. Jean Claude Van Damme. But uh, but actually, we got l lucky because uh, he was in Bulgaria in the same time uh, filming uh, Death Race Four, I think is the, the, <laughs> the title. And actually, we got him in his Sunday in his uh, free day to shoot for us. So we. We didn't uh, fl fl flood him from states. He was <laughs> in Bulgaria, and he was filming in the same in the same studio, in the same sets. Actually, where uh, later we we shot all the scenes for Bullets of Justice. It's a small American uh, movie movie studio called uh, Bufo, which is located in Sofia, near Sofia, near capital of Bulgaria. And actually, we are friends with them and work tight together. And we just got lucky. <laughs> this is the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I mean, it's tough, too, because Danny Trejo is almost like he's never not working. He's never not working. And he it, has 400 credits. And it seems like everybody's yeah. story is we just <laughs> ran into him. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> He's everywhere at the same time. But like, as a fan of, you know, parody and horror and action, he's almost like you, you want to avoid him like the plague kind of. Because Machete's good. It's not the best of those. I think um, Black Dynamite is a better kind well, of action. I, 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 I think that maybe you don't want to avoid him, but the projects, because he, he has said, he has never said no to a project. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's not... <sighs> Like you see him and everybody fucking likes him. I don't know of anybody that doesn't like Danny Trejo, yeah. but he's not exactly going to sell you on a movie. And I, I was shocked. Like, okay. You used him and I, we watched it with a room full of people over here and uh, we screened it on a projector. This is lockdown time, but whatever. We had people over and we were hanging out watching Bullets of Justice. <laughs> I had to fight people to put this on. And I'm like, wait, no, I remember Justin, the dude who wrote about it. Um, I'm like, dude, I remember him talking about this movie. I didn't know it ever came out. And I'm like, we have to watch this. And people were like, all right, fine. And I'm like, oh, they gave Danny Trejo 10 bucks and he'll show up. And then silence. 
the movie opened so strong and hit so hard. Like people were like, oh, hey, man. Yeah, it's a good thing you, you told me to shut up and we watch this. I've been recommending this nonstop. And I, I realize now I'm just ranting at you. But I was in a live stream and somebody had put it on because they just heard our podcast. And he was giving me a play by play. And uh, when your buddy gets naked with his assistant, he was just like, holy shit, is there real sex in this movie? <laughs> now, was that the porn stars? Like, because I know you mentioned you wanted a couple in the film. It's a very horny movie. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, we, we used a body double here. And the funniest thing was uh, we said, okay, we are going to use a body double. So let's, uh, let's think how the, your dick, I, I said, Timur, let's think how your dick is, is must uh, looks like. I think it's very silly to be a big one. I think it's better just to be a tired, small dick. <laughs> just having a rest. Here, I here. Think this is funniest. This is funniest instead to do something like a, like a funny, funny, very big or very small or very hairy. I said, let's, let's make it very random. And uh, this was very curious. And the, the second part was the girl, uh, uh, the one who, the first assistant, uh, She's a she's a famous actress here in Bulgaria. Oh, and she said, "Yeah, I cannot do a new scene. I, I need to be with uh, underwear." And actually, we used even for her a body double for the ass uh, ass scene for the ass shots for the tight shots of the ass. Anyway, but uh, in the wide shot where is everybody can see that it, it's her. Actually, we just erased the underwear. Wow, and she, <laughs> she looks naked, and then. When we when we do something like a small premiere for friends, she was very upset. She's fuck. What <laughs> now? Everybody will will be sure that this is my ass. What the fuck you did? Why, why you put me in these situations? Blah blah. Because she also helped us shooting for very very small money, and and this is the story of all this. Now, Actually, we, we our we have a much uh, our source is much more brutal, like almost porn, but we uh, we realize that no one will uh, distribute it later. This movie, if we are <laughs> <laughs> so no, deep, we, you put that cut on a Blu-ray. People, I'm telling you, we, I'm really trying to get this thing catching on because people are gonna love it. I think you know, there's just so much media now. You really need somebody to vouch for a film. And uh, I will happily take the title of the guy who discovered Bullets of Justice. I would love that. And a hey, kudos. I, uh, earlier, I, I mentioned my favorite segue I've ever done where uh, the language you're best at is film. And this editing in these sex scenes, I didn't catch on that they were body doubles until the third part of the film. And re-watching it now, Knowing that they're body doubles, still. Well, that's because you are not as uh, in tune to softcore <laughs> pornography such as myself. You know, we, you know, we we all have different paths growing up, Russell. So, uh -huh. you know, Red Shoes Diaries. I know all the editing tricks. Okay, Brian. <laughs> now you watched it alone. You... Uh, who's to say? Oh, maybe a buddy or two was there. No, you're lying. I mean, I imagine you in a hotel room watching Bullets of Justice alone. Oh, you're talking about bullets of justice. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, you're softcore Cyrus. porn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, how did you watch bullets? Alone. Okay. In my room. You nailed it. And it, so I think the environment was just different because I had a bunch of people there, and yes, we, but I respect quarantine. Continue. Oh yeah. You will. You live with me, so you're not no. safe from it. That like we the, mustn't upset Fouch. It's a film that really inspires energy in a crowd, and I. Now, has this played in theaters? Mm. Uh, actually, we, we, we played it in a couple of uh, festivals on, on big screen, but that was one and the only theatrical re release for, uh, in some Spanish festivals, uh, I think in Sieges, you, you know Sieges? Yeah. In Trieste, yeah. But that was it. <laughs> <laughs> but the people li li like it. I, I remember in sieges, you know how uh, the, the the Spanish fans uh, uh, hate uh, Ronaldo, and when, <laughs> when <laughs> actually when the part when 
Raksha kills Ronaldo in the truck. All the crowd starts screaming in in this <laughs> in the premiere becomes something like a soccer soccer uh, rev- uh, fin- finale. Everybody was uh, whistling, ah, clapping. <laughs> People in Spain really hate Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So it only how many theaters have it has it literally played in? Only like a handful. Hmm. Yeah. Damn it. That's a shame. This movie, like, fuck all these Marvel movies. We need bullets of justice out there. <laughs> now, you've got an interesting career. And earlier you mentioned maybe having uh, John Claude in the film. Now, mm-hmm. you worked with him on Code Red, right? No, 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 no. In, uh... oh, I'm sorry, not Code Red. Um, we Die Young. Yes, yes. The, uh, I, I was there. I was a second unit director, but I, I did another movie with him. I think it called the Eagle Path, but this movie, I think, never released. But I, I know him. Yeah, I work with him. Oh, how come you? How come you didn't bring him in? Uh, actually, uh, there is some producer called uh, Moshe Diamant. Actually, he's the guy who produced the first, uh, like, hard target. The, the first John, John Woo movies in in States. It's a, it's, a, it's a legend, but he's a married to a Bulgarian girl. So now this guy, Moshe Diamant, is, he, he's living in Bulgaria. And he he did one movie with Van Damme and asked me to, to do the action scenes because actually most of my career is as a second unit director. <laughs> Or, or main director of stupid movies. <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how we met. And actually, he's a nice guy. I, I, uh, first, I want him to, to be in Bullets of Justice. But he wants, I, uh, he wants more than we can arrange for him. I mean, money. Yeah. Volvo's but not even <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes fate knows what to to do. Yeah, Danny Trejo just came like from from the sky. Yeah, I man, I don't know if I would have watched the Bullets of Justice if John Claude was in it. I don't. So he's a nice I would, guy. I would. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He's kind of like a Dolph Lundgren for me now. What's wrong with Dolph? I don't know. They don't inspire anything. They don't make me want to watch a film. What are you talking about? Dolph Lundgren killed it as the kindergarten <laughs> cop, too. Yeah, but our our our, our we always to, want to put uh, this character, fa- famous characters, in some other in some other uh, shape, like like what we we try to do with Trejo. I always ask him to smile, but this guy cannot smile. His <laughs> face is constructed not never to smile, uh, and I I've tried a, a many times to to make him very very smiley person, but no, <laughs> nothing happened. Where every story I've ever heard with him is that he's very positive and very upbeat, and I always imagine him smiling, but I don't know. I guess prison got to him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's laughing, but I'm talking about just smile, like this very, very nice smile. Yeah, actually, he's a very nice guy. First, we were very afraid because when we when we read read the 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 list of wishes, we I said, "Fuck, how we can arrange all this big, huge trailer assistant, young girl with boobs uh, as an assistant, blah 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 blah." the very strange meal but actually when he came he said i don't need nothing just one chair put me here and he just sit on the set very very nice guy very very normal so <laughs> <laughs> was he on set with the child like now i i believe you can make a movie with the damn green screen and it would look amazing i think you've just got an eye and um the chops Actually, where did you get your start? Because looking on IMDb, your your all of your films seem like not not the easiest genre to tackle. Like war, heavy action, lots of cutting, a lot of coverage, and then you kind of got like wrong turns snuck in there early on. So I'm <laughs> I'm curious, like, how did you break into filmmaking? Uh, my my first actually my first uh, movie 
was, uh, was recue. And uh, I was there just to help with the second unit to, to do some action scenes. But uh, the producer, that was the same producer, Moshe Diamant, something, I don't know actually what was the real reason, but they fired the, the original director who was some English guy. And they, that, was, that happened uh, in, in, on the first shooting day. And they said, please, you have to, to save the movie. Come on, <laughs> come on the director's chair. And I said, fuck, what a, what a start, because it was so stressful for me. I, I even didn't know most of the locations for the first unit. Actually, I was prepared only for my scenes, and there was three or four shooting days. <laughs> wow. And this is how, actually, I, I came in in the movie business very, from the back door. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so the, so the movie was already it was in the middle of being shot, and they let go of the director, and then you just jumped right in in the middle of production. No, not in the middle on the first shooting day. On oh. the first day. Wow, yeah, you got a tombstone story going on here. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. why why they fire that first guy? I I I never understood why. I don't know. Like how the fuck? Like you must do something. That's pretty egregious to get removed. Let's just say he killed a guy. I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he killed an extra. He came in. He's like, we want to really make this movie good. Yeah. <laughs> I found a guy on Craigslist. That's he's right. willing to take a bullet. He slit his throat in front of the whole crew. <laughs> well, no, but actually, actually, the movie was doomed because uh, it was a part of some uh, festival Eight movies to die for. Maybe you guys know. Yeah. It. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Courtney Solomon. He was, uh, I think, the, the main producer of this. So he, he he said, "I will, I will, I will help you," because uh, I I don't have any. Uh, I wasn't prepared. Let's say, I did a uh, a couple of action scenes for some Indian movies. <laughs> oh. Sh shot it in Bulgaria, but I don't. F I didn't feel prepared in that time to just to to start shooting a, a serious zombie movie without any preparation, without even knowing the locations and all that. Well, he very, must have had very... some sort of faith in you to throw you in like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. They 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 liked me because I gave some I think good opinions about some scenes about the design of the of the movie, but. It's a low budget movie. I mean, I think uh, actually the budget maybe looks bigger than bullets, but because of uh, the pockets of the producers, I mean, the, the operational part of the, of the budget is even less. Now, in Bulgaria, when you're crewing a film, is what is the pay rate like? Like, is working in the Bulgarian studio system, is that like a good job that people strive for? Or do you get a lot of people who are kind of taking a pay cut that really just want to make a good movie? I don't, I don't know, but they shoot a lot of movies in Bulgaria. A lot. Because, because it's cheap, but actually now I think the rates are the same like in America. For the for the for the crew. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm curious. Like, the production is amazing, and I've only seen the um trailer for uh, Rekill, but I remember a few years ago somebody had recommended it to me. Now they they were often strung out when they came into the store that I was working on, so yeah. you know I always thought it was interesting because they knew I liked horror movies, and every now and then they would recommend stuff, and they were really into zombie films. And I remember them describing Rekill. And I was like, oh shit, eight films to die for. I should check that out. Do you what are the odds that we own it? We probably own it on like DVD downstairs. I don't know. But now you didn't get burned by it because what did you jump into Code Red next? Yeah, actually, I I, I was I shot the, the first part of Code Red, the first 10 minutes before before Rekill. I, and I, this is how they uh, pick, uh, picked me on the on the recue because they saw the trailer for Codret. Codret was my my 
actually my first first movie let's say project because i shot only 10 minutes trying to to find some producers to to do the whole movie but later that movie was uh, codred that movie was ruined by a lot of dumb people who fuck it up and actually i didn't even shot the whole movie i i, I left i left the project a uh, oh. couple of weeks yeah damn this is... oh wow oh God. yeah <laughs> So you stepped in for a dude that got fired, then returned to a film you were working on prior and then left yeah. that. Yes, yes. Because something, you know, it's something mysterious happened, but the, the budget disappeared. Oh. A big part of the budget. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was planning to shoot two months called Red, and then someone said to me you have two weeks <laughs> and i said fuck off i, don't know. I cannot do anything for two weeks now yeah, and just, you... go ahead i'm sorry no 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 that was it now the thing that i want to emphasize to people listening is that you know rekill is a film that opens with um san francisco being nuked and uh zombies are it's a zombie film so it's a uh, contemporary but yeah, it's contemporary. It's actually it's going to predict what's happening next week. Yeah. Or, you know, with the space junk, it landed already. I was holding out that it would hit San Francisco and, you know, we'd start the China war. But again, we we're doing it's military, big budget, like ambitious film in Rekill and zombies. So we're not skimping there. Then you have Code Red, which is special forces soldiers is sent into Bulgaria when a chemical agent from World War II is discovered. And it's another war movie. And then you yeah. came into Wrong Turn 6? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but actually uh, uh, it was filming here in Bulgaria. First, uh, first I was, uh, I don't want to do it because I, 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 I knew it's going to be two weeks movie. Actually, it's a, the, the filming was 14 days. Nothing, even not hour more, just 14 days mm. without any overtime. And now I, I, I knew that I'm doomed, but after I saw the script, I said, fuck, I will try. I, I, I was sure that I will, at least I will have fun because I was filming with uh, young, uh, funny guys. And this is why I put myself in. And yeah, but it, it was very, very easy movie for me. Now, I own all of the Wrong Turn movies, so don't feel bad. <laughs> I almost feel like <laughs> you're, yeah. Now, I remember when I watched this one, too, I was kind of um, caught off guard by what I now understand is just your, your inclination to lean into action, which I feel like, you know, in the original Wrong Turn, it was there. Like, it was kind of doing a thriller thing, even though it's a slasher film. And, like... I remember that stood out at the time when I watched this film, and it makes sense to me now. Back then, I was like, what the fuck is going on with this franchise? Yeah. Ha have you seen the new one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I saw it. What did you think bad. of it? It's not bad, but nothing new. I, I think I was bored. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I watched uh, in, from the, in, the, in the middle. I was start to breathing heavy because I was bored. Now, what, I don't, it, it's good. I mean, it's classy compared to to my wrong turn six. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's like a Star Wars, but <laughs> but deep inside the, it's empty somehow. I, I... Now, what what kind of film do you normally take in? Do you watch a lot of film on your free time? Yes, I I I, I watch different movies. I mean, I, I like good actions. I like good uh, horror movies. I like thrillers. I like Star Wars, <laughs> Mandalorian. Are you, are you mostly a genre guy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you didn't watch Mank? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, have you seen any other like action parodies that stood out to you? Like, yeah, and is it mostly is it mostly American films, or or, or you get a lot of uh, inspiration from other international features? No, no, mostly American, Americans. 
interesting. Like, I'm curious if you ever watched like uh, Velocipaster. No, I don't. Okay, what's what are some other like action comedies that we've been into lately? That really, uh, like, well, I, I think uh, Butt Boy could sort of fall into. That. First of all, uh, one of my favorites was Bad Taste. I, oh, I remember taste. this 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 movie changed me. Also, I really I'm a big fan of some Raimi's movies, like uh, Evil Dead, the the old one. Yeah. Where, where'd you fall on Drag Me to Hell? Yeah, I, I really lo- love this movie. I like Drag Me to Hell. Me too. Yeah. And I think that film was so unfiltered, Raimi, like Back to Evil Dead, that it caught a lot of people off guard. And it was still PG-13. I, I don't know how they did that. I don't either. I don't... <laughs> and guess what? They drug her to hell. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think the, I think uh, Raimi has this specific taste of uh, of filming he can he can scare you in the in the in the next second to to make you laugh with something and then again put you in in the horror mood. I think this is an um, amazing skill to to make with the audience whatever you want. I mean to to put a coat in hot showers like in seconds to change the the vibe. Wow, you know, hearing you appreciate Raimi doesn't surprise me but I I was almost worried you're going to come in and just be like a huge uh Tarantino fan or be like oh Desperado's the movie but no, that but got like me going. Bad, bad taste totally makes sense oh, for you know, sure like early Peter Jackson now we're not talking you yeah. know he started fucking around with Tolkien and all that bullshit now nah, he but... still did good there Eh, not for that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like most of the time, I think when a film like Bullets of Justice is conceived, people enter in, in instantly are just like Tarantino. That's going to be our vibe. This is how we pitch the movie. It'll be like cool guy, big. And I'm like, I'm not the fucking biggest Tarantino fan. And you definitely lean more into the genre. Like he's all about like you know subverting a foreign film and finding the poetry in between the lines. Where this, you're like Bullets of Justice is really, you understand the action tropes and you know how to like cross cut. Like your editing in this film is so good. Like who, who edited your film? Yeah, I, I, I edited by myself. I edited completely alone. Th- that's why I'm saying that actually I, I'm like a man, uh, like a one man band. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, exactly. That's, it makes a lot of sense. I, I tend to see a trend with directors editing their own footage and it just being so much more tighter. Like your film, the jokes really rely on the editing, like with the body doubles and the like explicit sex scene. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, it's yes, fucking yes. convincing. Yes, yes, yes. Now, how, long I... did it, how long did it take you to edit the film? Uh, like two weeks. Bullshit. Really? <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yes, crazy. But, uh, uh, my, actually, my background, I, I did a lot of music videos, like 300 uh, or uh, and maybe 200 uh, advertisements. So mm. I, I can edit uh, for one day. Uh, sometimes I'm editing like three advertisements per day. I mean, I'm very fast. And especially I, I, I never uh, shoot uh, something that I will never use it later. So. I know I don't I don't have a lot of doubt yeah. how it must look like. I'm just cutting very, very fast. Yeah, very economical. You you know yes, exactly yes, what you yes, need because and then you this get is it my, this is my <laughs> yeah. I, I I because I'm always working in a places dry of any budget though. <laughs> how very un American <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, do you have any tips for learning to edit quickly? Like, are you storyboarding your films or like for, we're coming from a position where we're trying to get out of the purely audio medium and into video and we bottleneck at editing. And I'm like, what's your secret? Uh, actually, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm always storyboarding everything. Always. <sighs> As a child, I, I was drawing a lot of comic books. That was my hobby. So now it helps me to 
to draw. Even my drawings are ugly. I never use a storyboard artist. I, I, I'm drawing everything by myself, but it helps mainly for, for me not to for, forget something. And also in Bullets, we, we improvise a lot because it was like, a, we are, Timur is the producer. He is giving the money from apartment. I'm, I'm executing this budget. But uh, we were free to improvise. We create some, I think one, the, the funniest scene with the plastic bag in the head inside, the, <laughs> the decapitated Benedict Asshole head inside the, 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 the bag. Actually, we, we create this scene on the set. Oh. It's supposed to be something completely different, but uh, the previous night, we drink a lot, like almost ho the whole night. And in the morning, we were so drunk and so in with a lot of headache. And we realized that the scene that we are going to shoot is very stupid and also is very heavy to shoot, very difficult. So we, we, we decide to create something on the set and just <laughs> to make fun and to have rest. And this is how actually we, <laughs> we gave birth of this very, very in my opinion very funny oh no it, it's a yeah. now we're talking about where the um so in bullets of justice if you haven't seen it uh you're making bad choices in your life but we have <laughs> anthropomorphic pig people who are rounding up humans and butchering them getting revenge bro now at one scene there's a uh, particularly um unfortunately <laughs> mutated pig man who has what appears to be a butthole face and when our heroes track them down, they're, they're in a sort of meat locker, but we have humans hanging. And a gun is shoved into the uh, back door of the human, and the barrel comes out of uh, what appears to be a penis becoming erect, and it <laughs> fires. And you made that up on the spot. So, sorry? And, and that's the scene that you were talking about, right? That you made up? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I now, I know you might think it's like a throwaway bit or something, but when we were watching the film, Clark asked if we could just fast forward to that moment and rewatch it multiple times. <laughs> My favorite part of the it's movie. his favorite part of the movie. It's great. <laughs> it's a dick yeah, actually, actually, with this with this scene, I I've uh, I I've shown my respect to some uh, uh, for some Sergio Leone. Uh, Spaghetti Western, if you remember the part, in, I think it happened in some train when the guy uh, put his gun in a, in a shoe. Yes. Uh, and this is how... This is your spin. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is my <laughs> variation of this scene. I see your shoe, I raise you a penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it yeah. just works like even uh, as like a metaphor in the film when we're dealing with so much like naked bodies and sex and it's just like so fucking visceral. Yeah. And then, you know, the thing is that joke would make me cringe if somebody told it to me like, oh, he puts a barrel of a gun up a butt and he shoots <laughs> out of the dick. I'd be like, oh, that is a selling point for me. It would make my eyes roll. That should be the title of the movie. And I would cringe. The thing is, if it were in the hands of a lesser director, it would be a cringy moment. But your film, you don't linger. Like, you, you don't pat yourself on the back for these, like, moments. And they, they flow like any action film would. And just as quick as it happens, you don't even have time to, like, really live in that moment. Because we're already, like, splitting more heads. It the pace of your film is so great and it's full of these little moments too i yeah sorry sorry i interrupted no no please uh yeah uh i th yeah th some people really really uh, are really tired watching this movie because it's too fast they said fuck it it's like a trailer but actually it, it composed like this because because originally it's a it's a 10 minute series each they are eight eight 10 minute series and when it's 10 minutes it's good because you have a rest you're uh, listening the the end credits music then watching the second then the third and you have a, a time to just to breathe but because of the selling point and the, the distributors we just stick all the series to each other 
And this is why sometimes it's, it's too fast. In, uh, but actually, I, I'm explaining to people, there is nothing to understand in this movie. Just watch <laughs> it and laugh. There is no, no, there are, there are a lot of layers, but you can find it watching it for the second or the third time. Yeah, there's a lot of replayability here. And you're, you're completely correct. You know, you need everything you need to know about where this story is going. You explain it in minute two of this movie with the want. I mean, you just see the pig people. You see the truck. It tells you what they're doing. Then you get um, a showdown, which now is that an homage to anything where we have a character walk behind another with a wanted sign? And they're like, this is the guy. Like, is that lifted from anything? Which one? So, sorry. So the, I, it's... We're cutting out. So in the very beginning of the yeah. film, when they mm -hmm. track down their bounty and yes. he's questioning, like, is this the right guy? Because he's kind of like shivering. He's literally shitting his pants. And yes, yeah. His assistant comes up and stands behind him with a wanted sign. And, you know, <laughs> it looks like they took the photo right then and there. And <laughs> it's like, this is the guy. Is that from another movie? No. No, but it's, it's a, it, it, this is our way to honor all the Western, the knife Western movie in all these parts. When the... <laughs> you know, I, I can recall in a film when somebody's sitting at a bar and they're looking mean, or, you know, there's a wanted sign on the wall yeah. and the hero's looking yeah. over at it. And then somebody sits up and it's their face and it kind of takes over it. And I mean, I know that, and I, I'm pretty sure that was made in like post Western era anyway. This mm -hmm. moment is so fucking good that it, it, when you're watching the film, it, it just, it makes you ask the question, how has nobody ever fucking done that before? It's such a good moment. And then it's, it, you back it up. Cause in most films we cut away and, you know, we get a kill off scene and we kind of linger in the tragedy where your film just, you know, you introduce a guy with a fucking jet pack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. And I think if people, if anybody listening, if you just go to Amazon Prime, put on Bullets of Justice, give it five minutes and you'll be hooked. 100%. Now, earlier you mentioned a part two. Is yeah. that a, how likely is that to happen? Where are we with that? Uh, actually, we, we have story. I mean, the, the script for the first part is like uh, 10 sentences. So uh, in, in <laughs> actually, we are prepared for the second part. We have something like a two pages of what must happen. And it's, it's funnier and it's, it's even more crazy than the first part. But uh, now Timur is trying to arrange this movie because the incomes uh, are, uh, let's say, unstable till that moment. I mean... We are not still getting enough money to to thinking to to shoot the second part, but maybe some other apartment will appear and Timur will sell it. So <laughs> we'll start soon, I I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm still <laughs> baffled. I think I again I just think there's so much media out there that unless there's like a huge marketing campaign, something that's just so well made and interesting and it just works on every level can totally just be overlooked like completely i'm i'm shocked that nobody had reached out to me before but what, now the movie came out in like 2019 no i think uh, uh no it was ah uh, actually the the, the big dis dis distribution uh done by uh the horror collective it was in October uh, 2020, but we we produce we finished the movie in April 19. Okay, yeah, yeah, but uh, it was a long path, like uh, find uh, looking for distributors, doing nothing, going to some festivals, uh, but it was a long, long path, and you know because we are coming from. Timur is from Kazakhstan. I'm from Bulgaria. It, actually, we never we never find some serious. We 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 found a lot of people saying, "Yeah, it's amazing. Let's do it. Uh, call me. I will call you tomorrow. I will call you next week." But actually, nothing serious. So it it, it stays 
uh, one year just in our wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny that you say, you know, you made this movie to have fun. And I mean, it really shines through. Yet, just the culture I've been living in and all the terrible fucking political podcasts I've been listening to. I was a little worried that you were going to come in here and either be like a militant vegan or just like, <laughs> And I don't know, a narco anti-nationalist trying to make some bigger picture about Russia and America getting along. I just thought you were going to be a filmmaker who <laughs> enjoyed what they did and uh, gave us a great work. So I don't really read into All bullshit right. like Russell does. Clark, so Clark won this one, but you, you, my friend, you're not a vegan. No, no, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> I'm a huge predator. <laughs> You know, yeah, 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 because actually this is part of the parody because all the movies, there is always something between American, the Cold War, Russians did this, but American, even in Mission Impossible, they are serving the same meal year by year. About <laughs> <laughs> actually, we, 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 we dedicated the scene when uh, Ludmila, the, the, the woman which uh, leading the the rebels explaining a lot of uh, useless yep. facts about asshole knows the secret blah blah but Yuri but then blah blah and all this we dedicated to Mission Impossible in this movie <laughs> always some huge action scenes happen and then people start to explaining uh, like 10 minutes of explanation why and when yep now that scene mm -hmm also really works because of the editing it's like you're you're doing a take on a like tiresome exposition that we already know yet you managed to make it funny i i'm really excited to see more of your work and i wish you had all your your um music videos listed on imdb yeah, yeah. track them down yeah i can send you links oh please do some, well, thank yeah you. yeah because now, Oksana, help me pronounce that name for the last music video he worked on. You did it. You said it you, downstairs. You go yeah. Yeah. I ju we just watched your vodka video. And yeah. I love it. Uh, really? And I'm like, what are you, a damn like jarhead? Everything is military. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This movie, co this movie cost $5,000. Wow. <laughs> See, I uh, are, not are movie, you, sorry, video. <laughs> yeah, the music video. Now, are you worried yeah. that are you worried that people know you can make stuff this cheap and they're like, hey, I got a script for you and I got a $20 bill. Here you go. <laughs> like go go make bullets of justice too. Like, <laughs> let me tell you, he can make 20 look like 200. <laughs> Easy peasy. He can do it. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. But are you in a corner at all with that? Actually, the, uh, what I want to, to share is that actually the real inspiration is my, my professional for Bullets it just it was my professional career because I'm always working in some movies that they are very small with, uh, let's say, uh, simple scripts, but always producer wants to, to look like a big, big uh, movies. And this is how the, the real parodies happens. When some when there are too much ambitions, uh, cover it with nothing, and actually that was my bullets is my revenge <laughs> to all this uh, to all this. Uh, uh, fuck, I lost words. This is why I'm. <laughs> no, I get it. I, yeah, it's it's very it's very. <laughs> yeah, but you you got that, me. Right. I hope. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're hired to do the impossible, so you make yes. a revenge film. But you fucking achieved it. So yeah. I don't know if it really works out that way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's also, you know, it, it's a satire of all the other micro budgets. Yeah, it, it totally makes sense, man. Like we're on the same page for sure. Mm -hmm. And it translates like it, it really comes across. I, I don't know. I couldn't love your film more. And um, Thanks for taking the time to hang out and talk with us. I know you mentioned early on that you don't do podcasts and especially over here in America. Uh, 
it means a lot. And I love the film and we're really going to be pushing it. And we did it. It's over. It was easy peasy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for a good words. It was fun for me. I, I feel, I feel good. <laughs> Not stressed to talk with you. And I'm <laughs> good. One more time. Thank you for interest for your interest. Oh, I, I, I really hope to make you happy with the second part soon, but who knows? Would, uh, Valeria, before we cut you loose, you got anything uh, you're working on right now that uh, will be out fairly soon? Anything we can look forward uh, to? Nothing serious, actually. I'm what I'm doing now is just uh, TV advertisements and waiting. To... What do those look like? Are there a lot of explosions in your TV ads? <laughs> no, no, they're very bold. They're disgusting. <laughs> 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 People talking on the phones, people eating some shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, they are like a usual job for the fridge to make the fridge full and feed the kids. <laughs> there you go. Man, I love you. When Next time you have something out, please let us know and we'll harass everybody we know to watch it. Um, you're, you're incredibly talented and I, I can't wait to see more from you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.